Okay, good evening, all of y'all fellow Elden Ring mains. I know you're hooked as fuck, but hear me out. I have a proposition for you. How about we watch some good ass Guild Gear Strive in the good old FT7 format, and after that, we can all go our merry ways and get some more of those runes farmed up, all right? All right, splendid. Uh, because we got, once again, a full house of interesting sets on the horizon for tonight. And we got a lot of Portuguese player in the house. And consequently, we're going to be joined by one of the voices from the Portuguese fighting game community. Welcome, welcome to the cast, Lurkus. Hello. Hi, hi. Yeah, I've also stopped playing Elder Ring for a little bit to be here. Uh... But only for a little bit. <laughs> for a bit. We'll see. It's, I, it's very good. I'm having a ton of fun. I might go I through not withdrawals. I Guilty Gear in a while. <laughs> <laughs> Same. I mean, um, who, which one of us have, actually? Uh, <laughs> Alright, so... A little bit of hassle with the schedule. I think we're, in the end, gonna do the uh, Dr. Tony versus Corn on Fire matchup. Uh, Corn on Fire, of course, uh, originally or originally the matchup was supposed to be uh, between the two Tonys. Uh, Tony, that guy, couldn't make it. We have to postpone that matchup for the second time in a row. Maybe third time's the charm, but um, we got a, we got a sh last minute replacement. So fear not. It's unfortunate, but uh, it'll be good to see uh, our own Dr. Tony showing some action because that man's Faust is incredible, and I do not understand what's going on on the screen when I see him, and I'm just excited for him to be getting some attention on it. Yeah, I mean, the the one time I've seen them play was, yes, it was, it, it is, is there's really something when you see Faust players who really got, like, stuff, the basic stuff under control. It just looks completely different. It looks so good, and it feels so good as well to root for, because... You know, Faust is one of those characters who are, to some extent, a little under, uh, not necessarily underrepresented, but underappreciated in this game. Yeah, and it's always good to see, it's always fun to see a Faust win. It's, you know, I, I don't want to say that I'm not also rooting for Corn on Fire, but it is always fun to see the, the underdog character do well, and seeing what, what it can bring to the table, and I think it's going to be a really fun matchup to see. You now, a character that's considered to be in everyone's top 5, top 3, top 1 in Nago versus, you know, Laust. So, I think it's going to be a really fun match. Yeah, interestingly enough, even though, like, these two characters are on the polar opposite sides of the tier list, it's... they, they do say it's not... the matchup is not too bad for Faust. Just based on how, you know, the button interactions go and stuff like that. Hmm. Yeah, and obviously button interactions against Faust are always something oh, a bit um, ethereal. You never know what's going to happen with, with the items and everything that Faust can do. Having very weird buttons that take him around the screen in unique ways. It's always fun to, to see what each other character can do against that and speaking of items it's like i think the items are items obviously have been always very important thing for faust but it, especially in this game like the, the item awareness is something that you have to rely on i see the best faust players you you watch for example nage his item level is like like the, uh, the item game plan is on a completely different level like compared to other players it's it's i think that's that's the one thing that separates okay faust players from the top faust players because you can do some really really funky stuff if you're ready to react to the items that you throw yeah especially having the awareness to see certain items being thrown early in interactions and and picking up at different combo routes different uh, setups based on it is something that really distinguishes kind of the top level of Faust players. Um, I tune into RF 
RF stream from time to time, and uh, that guy can do whatever he wants with with Faust, and it's really cool to see to see you know such a unique character in the hands of the really creative people. I think that's the biggest thing that um, to me really sets Faust apart is that it's a it's a character that allows people to be creative with him, and that's always cool to see in in fighting games. Yeah. All right, beaming up. One last DM. I think we had Corn on Fire in the lobby already. Yeah. Tony should be just about to boot. Yeah, what about the uh, the other Portuguese players? We got quite a few. We got, uh, in addition to Tony, we got Bulastro, we got Diogo, uh, and the Vigilante. And, yeah. I mean, the Vig Vigilante, I think most people who watch european fighting game content will will have seen him play he plays a nasty soul was at strife cup and did really well really good showing for um for portugal especially playing soul which seems to be the the trademark portuguese characters <laughs> everyone's playing soul but still i think kind of everyone here has done some really good showings diogo was one of the first people from the community that i played against when i first started strife don't know if he even remembers that, but uh, really threw me into the gutter with his his Kai and his uh, Zato. And we saw the Kai last week. We're going to see the Zato this week. And I'm really excited for for a showing of what he can do on that character. And then we have Bulatstro, who has more recently picked uh, Milia, was one of the first Eno players before that I got to, to practice against and I got to practice the Mirror against. And now seeing him on Milia, haven't seen it as much, I'll admit, but I'm excited to see what kind of showing he's going to bring um, into the event today. Yeah, I think, uh, all things considered, I think Bulastro is uh, one of the sort of, one of, one, of, one of the newer players, for sure, based on, uh, based on the numbers I've seen, but like you said, don't don't know much about them yet it's gonna be interesting to see it's like that yeah that interesting like w w when you when you see a player you've never seen play before like just sort of with an open mind uh, sort of checking how are they gonna how are, how are they what kind of things they like to do what kind of player are they how are they going to express themselves on screen yeah and um, it, it's always just fun to see people putting themselves out there, regardless of, of their their skill level. And it seems like the, the match is about to start. Hell yeah! So we've got Corn versus Tony. Tony, in fact. I need to I need to be careful. I need to not get in the English mindset. I need to properly pronounce it for That's so for hard, the homeland. <laughs> Right, it's gonna be definitely the control that makes or breaks the max up for Faust and gets the 5D right definitely. off the bat. Ooh, Korn oh. opting to not burst it. A lot of damage coming through. That's like one of the biggest combos that you can see Faust doing ever. Yeah, Faust and big combos don't typically go together, but it's nice to see getting that good damage, getting the bomb to hit. Speaking of big damage, one of oh. Faust's bigger starters, definitely the bomb. And now it's just about controlling space. And it's weird to see uh, Nago with as big buttons as he has, getting zoned out almost by the one character that is bigger than him. Yeah, right. It's it's like the item sort of acts as projectiles in a way. Once they're on the ground, Faust really doesn't have to do anything and they will do their job preventing Nago from doing a whole lot of stuff. Yeah, exactly. And especially when when you're fighting against Faust, it's 
you have to approach the game so so much differently from any other character that you could be playing out again. But now we're actually seeing Korn getting in there and getting a lot of damage, getting the Ooh. pop. Right, that's actually and a will pretty... unfortunately be. Oh wait, wait, did that miss? What what happened there? <laughs> I, that looks so weird. It's as if the Rara I just missed. I've never seen that before. I, we need our uh, our resident Nago experts to explain if that was something that Nago did or if that was on Faust because I am going to be honest, I, I do not know these interactions in well enough oh, to make right, a comment. Right. Because you, you do have control over when you cancel into the next follow-up, so maybe maybe it was a little too late there on the cancel. Alright. Korn played very patiently. You have, you have to... You have to respect being able to keep calm when playing against, you know, someone who pollutes the screen as much as Faust. Yeah, it's... The first game was definitely a good testament to how, how the matchup can go. The first round was such a good control from Tony, and then... On a moment's notice, the Naga player can just explode into million damage points. And here we have the, the patented Faust gameplay of just throw items, see what happens. I will play both time. players. Oh. Oh, opting to oh that five B still active. That was pretty good for for oh. Tony. Oh, getting the bomb hit, not getting much out of it. More item setups. Yes, More... spend it all. Yes. <laughs> Chaos. Yeah, Coin kind of just has to hold this. A lot of those items just holding them in place. Oh, opting for that late burst. Oh, they escaped Tatsu! Oh? One, one hit point left. Can't block any. Oh, that's so good! Oh. Chance. Uh, um, Tony goes over it. Finding like a kill. You know, I'm used to, to, you know, just not wanting to jump against uh, against Nago, but Tony seems to just be very confident in, in the ability to just go above and make some of those annoying Nago moves with. Uh-oh. Oh? oh? The drops gets the drop, gets a 5D. Good check. Very close to going bust. Oh. Oh, I think that's that's one of the one of the best pelees is to actually pop. No way. The, the throw was sort of going active already, oh. but... And the command grab to finish it. Ah. Uh. That was that was amazing. I, I I actually thought that the throw from Korn would have gone through, but I guess it was just mistimed a little too early or something. All right, one apiece. Six B from Korn. Are you stretching that hitbox out to try and get it? Uh, try and get into Tony's space. Ooh, this is where it starts. This is the critical <laughs> mash. This is the good old Faust gameplay. <laughs> well, in Strive, but it's it's kind of easy to just snowball into more items once you throw one item that sort of prevents them from running forward. Oh. There's uh. barely any any recovery on the item throw in this game. You can just keep throwing super fast. <gasps> Ooh, it was active still. The banana there is really not letting Tony have the space he wants, but it's gone now. There's a bomb behind. He's aware of it. Still just sp spacing it out. Lots of patience. The oh, burst the, the throwing the bomb. <laughs> Actually, it's a block. That was so amazing. Again, using the clone. Bomb goes into the skies, but gotta oh, be really Faust careful. with his own afro. And just goes for the ambiguous play of which side was Faust on there. There's a lot of things, that, a lot of setups that I've seen, even from Tony, where you can't really tell which side Faust is going to be hitting you from. And that's how he gets ahead, is just polluting your mental stack and then just being where you'd least expect him. The hammer prevent you. Oh, nice! Gets, gets sniped. Check. But he's too far away for, for Nago to really capitalize on it. And the double bomb was quite a bit of damage on Korn. 
bomb off screen. Yeah, has to respect once again. Look at this. The endless stream of items working for Tony. Oh, but the five heavy! Yes, sir. But can unfortunately extend into bigger combos because so much blood already in there. No. Horn getting hit, but even with the burst available, it's just not a good option. Tony is just keeping distance so well. And with that said. Oh! What? <laughs> Oh no! Wait, Tony died. I thought I thought Horn would have lost that to the bomb. It was really unfortunate. The burst <laughs> recovery straight into his own bomb. But back to grinding we go. We got the neutral, and we're ready to play it. I do like how Corn is like staying super patient still. Both of these players are are extremely patient. Ooh, that's so oh, good. that the recovery into the PRC using as much meter as possible to just get out of the corner. The forbidden because... tech. Faust, one of those characters who have a really long startup on their super, and it ends up working for them if you want to go for that PRC gaming. It's a lot of resources, but when it's the only option that you have, to get out of a corner like that, and the grab is going to take it. But yeah, when you want to get out of that corner, it's it's kind of your only option as far as I don't think he has a lot of things to do that would get you out of such a sticky situation. Yeah, unless you just want to wait for for a block and then try to gamble on YRC. But I mean that is vulnerable to the command grab. So you you gotta pick your poison. Yeah, has to respect the meteors. The items the and the, the mini up. Faust now, the mini Fausts, plural even, give him so much space to, to move forward and, and play his game plan. Ooh, nice! Gets the side swap, and now in a really good position here, Tony. Oh, is he gonna combo into the bomb? Not quite. Oh, with the command grab. The the one thing that really plays into. Oh, the 5D finishing it up. Nice. The thing that really plays into Anago in, in this matchup is Faust has to win so many more interactions to to take rounds. Yeah, it's it's gonna it's gonna end up being like something like 20. Even even on the, in the best case scenario, you have to play for like 20 to 30 seconds to to sort of grind Nago down. Whereas Nago needs in best case scenario like six seconds and you're dead. Yeah, which is what we just saw there. A bit of a of relentless assault, and if, if Tony can't adapt, can't cover for for himself in that position, it's very difficult to, to make it out. But the moment you give him a little bit of space... Right, or nice. the gold burst, what's he gonna do with it? Yeah, you Obviously already know. Items. <laughs> Get the improved Afro throw. A right, good block and a good punish. Here we go. Chance for corn. Very high on blood though, so can't use any of those special moves yet. Tony can just use this space and, and whittle corn out. And playing at a distance, making it so that. Oh, never mind. Corn is able that... to just make it through. Yeah, that was a dash. That was a second 5D block in a row. Completely turning the tides, Korn getting punishes for both of those 5Ds. It, it is a very difficult to defend against tool, uh, especially if you do the non-charge version. Starts up very fast, but if your opponent blocks it, man, you are so punishable. There is we see here a rare, rare footage of a Faust on a very big offensive. And unfortunately, he gets punished, forced to burst out of it. <gasps> The jump dust. I do love me some jump dust co counter hit combos from Nago. Oh, that's so smart! Saw the startup and determined. All right, 6P is good here, goes for it and gets the round. That's mm. a studied interaction. That's yeah. excellent. 6P is like the historical kind of unsung button, or maybe depending on. Oh, gets hit by the bomb. But yeah, 6P has always been such a good button against Faust, because a lot of Faust buttons don't really hit your toes. They they are very high profile, and you can try to 
sort of low profile with your 6p. This man is nine foot tall. That will that will happen. You will be struggling to hit a, to hit um, low down when you're that tall. But Tony is just being patient, and keeping pressure up. He gets the counter hit. Nice. That's a good starter. Toe to toe, two two. Gets the bait. And Korn has so much blood available. Here's the super. It's gonna do a lot of damage. Not gonna quite kill. Wait a second. Is it gonna kill? It might. It actually it might. It very well might. It is a Faust. Oh, just oh. The exactly one hit point. That is a fraction of a hit point. Goes for, for, for the ballsy gold burst, but unfortunately doesn't pay off. Yeah. I, I, do, I do respect the option. Yeah, I, I think... I think it... Like Tony's only option was to gamble on something invulnerable, so it was gonna be like backdash, gold burst, pretty much your only options to save yourself against the chip situation. But now he he does not want to forgive that, and he's about going to put Nago in the corner, giving him a taste of his medicine, but will get thrown out. Corn making Nago move like I didn't think he could. As long as. The ground is not polluted by those items. We have. Oh, 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 oh but, the but the Afro explosion. Man, it always feels like Tony has one more extra ace card up his sleeve, one more item that covers you up. I want to give him as much credit as possible, but sometimes I do think how much of this is a, a planned setup versus just the item worked out. But in my head, it's all planned. It's all part of the. It's all part of the, the grand scheme, you know, you pull the item that you need, you pull the item that you want, yeah, and it's, I mean, it's going to work out. <laughs> you only have a finite amount of options that you can pull out of your item back, and then you just sort of always know what to follow up it, uh, follow, it, follow it up with, depending on the situation, so it's, it's a little bit of both, I want to say. Ooh, big and, and just, even if it is, you know, it is still down to a bit of luck, but the ability to... <gasps> oh my god, that, that would have been such a cool combo. Oh? The cross-up manages to get the hit. I was kind of surprised that Tony uh, wanted to burst this. This will be a difficult comeback, but... Ah, uh, not quite. It is unfortunate. But yeah, no, even if... Even if you um, have to confirm out of what items you're getting and, and identifying what is going on is a skill, even if there is a bit of luck involved. Yeah, yeah. Faust 6 be putting in some work. That button is terrifying. Ooh, perfectly timed. Hot potato smash. Yeah, this will be hard to approach. A lot I of weights. I think Mini Faust is one of the most annoying items for for uh, Nago to play against in this matchup. Because that, that's that one uh, one item that allows you to sort of... Oh! oh super baited. Oh, oh no, the, the last whiff. hit! Korn still has a burst available though. Oh. And snipes! Yeah, Korn has been turning up the crank on those jump Ds and has been hitting them more and more consistently. That's actually one of the tools that you can kind of use to challenge those bag throws, those jump 2Ks from Faust. Yeah, other than that, what are you gonna do? I guess too heavy is always an option as well. All right, another command grab. Third another one. command grab. Is this just the, the Portugal spell? <laughs> another command grab! He's sure, like, no, we'll no go way, for they're another. gonna go for the fifth! He goes for another! <laughs> another one? Six? <laughs> Whoa! I... I, I wonder... <laughs> it, that must have been... That has to have done some mental damage. For sure. And, and I'm, I'm surprised Korn just insisted on reading that the next one is gonna be Strike. Surely, Tony won't go for another one. Yeah. <laughs> but unfortunately, Tony went for another one. It could be one of those situations that you 
haven't necessarily been in too many times and you're like, all right, how am I supposed and to- And revenge here, okay? Nice. <laughs> Korn just decided, you know what, I'm going to do the same for you. To, to you. And Tony just had to take it. I mean, considering- now both of the players without any burst going into a final round on this match. Oh, the bait! Catches again, yeah, oh. that hook your backwards. Really good tool for baiting the mashes. You can tell Tony didn't want to get command grabbed again. Okay, this will be super close, but I think it's not gonna kill. Oh, it does kill! <laughs> you the never scaling. know! The scaling! Oh, I should have known. I looked at the risk just before the super, so a little bit of risk there. Should have known. Naga super, should have known. Ooh, there's movement right into the command grab. Oh, this time the 5P is far enough. That's gonna be punished. Not too badly, though. But Tony needs to find a way out of this corner. This is dangerous. Fortunately, it seems to now be getting the items that he would need. Calls the command grab and gets the grab of his own. The ODG hit didn't manage to pick up the trumpet. But we'll get the super wall break. I don't even know what, what Faust gets off of um, a knockdown wall break. Some sort of an instant air dash mix up. Yeah, here we go. Yeah, I guess it's the jump heavy or empty low or throw or something of the kind. He will have a hundred meter at the corner here. Or not. There's no corner. There's only going to be another reset. Ooh, that might actually be enough. 100 more. Oh, a lot of I items. Super instead. Oh my god. And Nago is flattened. Honey, it's 4 p.m. Time for your Nago flattening. Nago being sent back to the 2D games. Oh my god. So many, so many hammers. I think a lot of Faust players actually tell me that the hammer is the most exciting item that you can throw. I've seen a lot of funny stuff from to from Tony actually sending me uh, or sending us in the the Portuguese server things that you can do off of just getting a hammer in the middle of a combo and having it extend what you're doing. Oh, gold gold burst in the corner. We all know what Tony wants to do with that meter, but will he get the chance to do it? Gets the fishing pole, throws out. Oh, that gold burst! I've never seen that before. That's so sick. The Faust, the Faust wall to wall. I mean, pretty much every character in the game does get a. Oof. Oh. oh no. Oh, the wire C. Oh. Come one on, hit. just one more hit, Tony. Oh, and the chip. And damage. the chip will do it. Yeah, that was a that was a really tricky situation. No life, no FD left. Bomb back coming. What are you gonna do? Duel one. Right, Tonys, they're definitely still in this. On the chase. Three to five. And I mean, the thing about the hammer, even if the hammer isn't necessarily like immediately hitting the opponent, what is the opponent gonna do about it? They they can't really approach either, because then they're probably gonna eat the hammer. <gasps> oh my goodness. Ooh. Call Michael Bay, that was almost a perfect combo. Oh, big one. Gets a little bit of it. Both players are, are very mindful of each other's command grabs now. But even still, that won't stop Tony from going for the going from the wake-up grab. Oh wow! I, I bet Tony missed the command grab there. That, that, that was probably an empty into a throw. Another one? Oh, not this time. Korn finally gets a good backdash off against that setup. Nice check. Don't let the vampire bite you. Yeah, that, even, even though Korn getting that too heavy hit can't really follow it up very easily, especially with any specials. But now the blood going down. We have options once again. Yeah. Oh! <laughs> with that reversal, the 100 meter reversal blocks. Tony is so good at using that tool. And it's a kill. And that was enough to kill. 
You never expect Faust to be doing you know, damage with his combos. And especially against Nigo, a character that so notoriously has a lot of health and mm -hmm. is very difficult to kill. Not a combo breaker there. Here we see we see the, the offense coming. The hammer just denying space. Oh, the little guy doesn't activate yet, but it's not like it doesn't, Gorgon... it doesn't even need to activate. Yeah, I it's... feel like Mini Faust's just threat is enough a lot of the times to keep people in check. It keeps you from from just doing things because you'll always be thinking, you know, will will the Mini Faust hit me there? And you see Tony here with a Roman cancels to get those grabs. Ooh, off the corner. This could be dangerous. Oh, but missing that. I think was going for like a air to air or an air throw, but Tony already nowhere to be found. Then that was a, that was a dangerous looking situation score wise. Corn on fire was on five while Tony was on 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 three. On three or two, yeah. And yeah, now Tony's on the chase. Dead even. This is what we like to see. The even matches. The wake of gold gold burst. I foresee, yep. 100 meter item super. Oh my god, look at those bombs. Don't get hit now. Nice backdash. But again, the, the little, little guy. guy is going to stop. But no. Korn is actually able to be patient and just know when to go again. And I think, yeah, this is definitely going to kill. Good job on Korn. Basically threading the needle through all of those items, staying patient and picking the perfect times to strike. Oh, the fabled Naga round start, 50 health gone. Oh, that was a good clone. Has to respect the bomb here, though. Exactly. Even after taking so much. You know, you can never count Faust out of the round, especially when he gets a gold burst like that. Which side? Ooh, Ooh. the ambiguous setups. Once again, the command grab. Gets the burst out. Nice. So this is really good. He's in a really good position to, to take this round and go into the next one without having to, to, to be thinking about Korn's burst. Ooh, that should be it. If they don't miss, I guess they never miss. Oh. And now this is a really good position for Tony. He showed an ability to remain calm, but Korn is just out here with a vengeance. Didn't like that that just happened. And he's trying to put Faust in his place. Ooh, but here, the big back Fukyo. Baiting out the response from Tony and a big combo as a response. This will be a hard comeback. We, we believe in the Doctor. Oh no! No, and it's. I, I feel like I caused that. <laughs> Commentator curse. It is Corn who reaches six wins first, and now it gets kind of awkward. But Tony's not too far behind. Tony honestly. has shown so far to have a very strong mental presence in the match, and I feel like if there if there's someone who can not be phased by this by by the bad situation, I think it is him, and we just have to see how he plays it out. Getting that hit, forcing Nago back into the corner. The Mini Faust gets hit by his own bomb, unfortunately. Nago jumps over the army of Mini Faust. Ooh, the three forward! The oh. weight, <laughs> the weight cancelling the combo, but it's just not being enough. I feel like Corn on Fire didn't really press too many buttons that round, but pressed them in the perfect places. Oh, Ooh, that's a good starter. Michael Bay. The burst getting stuff. It's a very nice start to a round now. Dr. Tony. He has meter. He's just keeping space. It's just about using it right to just close the round out. But Korn isn't just going to let it happen like that. Ooh, very good awareness. Korn notices he's, he's below Ooh. Tony. The only way to get out of that setup is to throw. This could be the end of the match, but Tony stops the approach. Uh oh. Danger, danger. Escape. Plays Matsu. into the back Fukio. Oh my god, those chases from Korn have been so good. But he's gonna pop! I think Tony noticed. Yeah. 
And we're still alive. Oh. I always get amazed at, at players who manage to play a character with so many so many different resources and things that can happen and then still pay attention to your opponent's resources. And here we have Korn right off the start popping. Use oh, too no. much blood. Look at that damage. What do you mean Faust doesn't have combos? <laughs> What do you mean Faust doesn't have damage? I only need a Blood Rage starter. You know, if if you get a item super with only hammers, you can do 90% for most characters. Mm hmm Ooh, nice throw. Oh, and base blocks. The... We okay. could be seeing the final interactions of this match. Oh, but Tony decided to... Oh, gets hit! Taking it to the last match. To the last game, in fact. Didn't want it to end there. But one interaction away from just being taken out and just... Shows patience. Oh gosh, it's all down to this one. And opening up with a decent item. Now goes swerving the afro. But has to get it this time. Oh, wow, the Scarecrow cross-up. Into the command grab. Oh, which side? I have no idea. Still holding on to the afro. I think as, as how, long as... How can you know? Genuinely. That's, that's, a, that's a good question. Like, I've... A lot of these setups I've never even seen before, because not a lot of Faust players out there. And it's not certainly, not specifically something you can even lab for. You just have to, to get a feel for what the person is doing. But Korn here, with those long buttons, being able to clutch the round out. Again, the first person on set point. Tony needs two. It's a good start. Get the throw. Here we go. What's the mix-up? He's going to apply this corner pressure. Plus flames on the back. Overhead. All right, kind, kind of unfortunate having to break the wall there with a with a really small combo, but we'll we'll take them. Small wins. <gasps> More bites. Oh no! Oh! Ooh, the Manages to get out of it. You aren't going to do that to me. The oh, six B. Oh my goodness! Drops the combo though. The jump two K. The drill from the heavens. Gets and the there's. Will that kill? It will! And that's enough! I'm so happy that we're seeing a, a final round on this. The last This has game. been an incredible matchup. Oh, but an unfortunate round start. But it doesn't seem like Korn is going to get that wall break. Oh my, did, he, did Tony actually cross with that hammer? That looked really funky. The amphibious setups. <laughs> Indeed. Set it on fire. Oh, but that afro doesn't explode fast enough. Oh, the burst bait. Is this it? One hit point. Just and barely. But Tony has the whole... The entire bar. But here's the thing. Corn on Where fire. is he? From above. Oh, no. 100. And a bonus, but level 2 blood, so can't really dive in with any of those specials. Oh, Tony decides to go in and attack! The wire oh, seat! The wire seat giving the plus frames! I wonder, I do wonder if that was a really ballsy play there. Going in, especially when when Korn didn't really have a lot of blood left to spend, so couldn't sort of skip past the neutral. But man, what a match. That was an incredible match. And that was only the first one. Oh, you know, boy. I, I, don't, I don't like uh, being a bit of a biased commentator, but I was really rooting for Tony. Korn also played their heart out. That was an incredible showing by both players. Hey, it's fine. I'm 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 used to biased commentators. I'm used to commentating with Rygand. <laughs> <laughs> and that's what I'm here for, to deliver the the the, the counterbalance with uh 
with uh yeah because I'm, I'm such a unbiased commentator <laughs> aren't i <laughs> anyway let's see what are we gonna do next uh i think leah and bulastro if they are ready to go yeah we had diogu showing up but i think uh it's a bit it's a bit early leah saying they're ready to go all right sounds good Now, upcoming we have uh, Baiken, who is the newest character. I'm still, you know, I've not been playing that much uh, since Baiken's been released. So I'm going to be honest, I really struggle with that matchup. She has uh, the very long normals. And Milia is another character that I also struggle to play against because, you know, I play Eno, I try to go really fast and not let other people do things. And Milia does the same. But always feels a little bit faster than me. Um, so I don't know. It is not. Ooh. That's not what I'm trying to do. Yeah, overall, you <clears throat> really don't see too many Milia players. Milia, one of those characters that. I guess because a lot of people don't have very high opinion of her, people tend to place her on on sort you of know, like the bottom end of of the power charts. People downplaying Milia? Where have I heard of that? <laughs> um, that's a that's a little thing for for all the Portuguese people listening. Who would downplay Milia? Is like, uh, how, how bad can she be? She's always been the poster girl of set play in Guilty Gear. <laughs> yeah, li Liquid's um, <laughs> turning himself in. <laughs> our, our local Milia down player, but <laughs> we're going to see Veloster playing. And I'm excited to see this because, as always, I'm just excited to see where people are going. I haven't seen much of, much of his Milia, so... It's always cool to see. Leah we saw playing last week, if I recall correctly. Yeah, so it's I cool think so. always to see uh, how these people progress. You mentioned those long-reaching pokes. Baiken is, is an interesting bag, especially in in the two latest Guilty Gear games. Has a lot of buttons that reach really far, but are kinda difficult-ish to hit confirm. So like kinda kinda classic. Not classic, but kind of archa archaic uh, footsie buttons, sort of, like 2S, jump slash. Yeah, it seems to, to do a lot of the, um, the kinds of things you would expect from almost from Street Fighter, of winning more interact, having to win more interactions, but having the tools to be able to, you know, stretch out to, to get them, to get them going, get that, those little bits of damage in. But, you know, that's not to say that she doesn't have really good confirms on certain situations, especially when you see what, what players like Bev are doing when she just gets you in the air with that jumping slash. But also, speaking of characters that usually are, are talked down for having low damage, Millie can still do a lot So when she vortexes, and we just saw that from Bulastro, getting most of Leah's health bar down, taking the round. Yeah, Millie... Uh... Melee is one of we those just... characters that just flow really well. It like single combos might not be the most damaging, but like the good setup that you get just can end up doing a lot of damage in in a very short period of time. Yeah, exactly. I mean, we were just kind of having a little bit of a conversation introducing these two characters, and uh, the first uh, the first match just kind of went past us. We're already in the in the, the second game of this. And there's already one character on, on quarter health, you know. <laughs> oh, third times this charm on the 6P. Gets the wall break. Ooh, I think Blaster probably back. wanted the super, but Leah was so high up on the wall that... 
It's very difficult. I, I have a friend who played Milia for a very long time, and one thing that he always told me was Milia really struggles to... The, it, it's very difficult to know when the, um, the hair dive super... I don't remember what it's called. To, to get it to hit the wall at those high points. And so a lot of Milia players will be forced to go for wall breaks that are... A, put you at a bit of a disadvantage. Yeah. Because obviously, if you go back to a neutral position, it's very difficult for her to run her game plan. Yeah, because she's about just that hard knockdown into a hard knockdown, if possible. Kind of like Leo, it's 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 really a shame, in a way. I guess. Oh, was that a safe jump? Oh no, not quite. But that will kill. Man, there are some interesting situations where. Bike and Super just does so much, especially like in the corner, and especially if you have a little bit of risk uh, to start out the combo with Bike and Sanzu just for some reason ends up doing so much. Ooh, that's Jump Flash that we were talking about. And Leah getting those small confirms, putting up pressure, and you know, Milia not, not the. Not the tankiest character in this game. Unfortunately, you cannot super through through the projectile, through the disc. Yeah, I mean, if, if she was on the ground, that would have been okay, but... I mean, generally in this game, Milia's disc setups, she tends to be airborne. Even if you do just an empty jump into, into the same side, it's always a good idea to, to be airborne at the start, just to... Make the opponent think you you're going to go for the cross up. Nice, good six P, securing the corner position from Bulastro, but yeah, and Bulastro con contesting on the um, on the heavy Kabari follow up. Yeah, those guard breaks after the Kabari follow up minus three for Biken. <laughs> But again, she has she has the parry option, so it can be dangerous to try to push your frame advantage against her. It's very much about kind of knowing who you're playing against and, and figuring out their um, their tendencies. Nice. It seems there that Bluster is being able to call out what Leo is trying to do and just running his game plan. Uh, jumping heavy, really strong move from Viken. And now, unfortunately, it's a Milia in the corner, but manages to get out. This time, maybe? Yes, there we go. And the punish. And that was important for Bulastro to start offense there as well, because look at oh. how much risks they still have on them. Especially on a Milia. You know, we were just watching Faust play, character notoriously... Notor not not Notoriously called out for being made of paper, but Milia is another one that will just go down in not a lot of hits. So you really have to abuse the fact that you have really strong mobility to <laughs> make it out. Yeah. And just like that, if you put your opponent in a position where they just can't fight back, you know, you don't um, you don't feel the issue of not having a lot of health. <laughs> you see that just two hits. And Bulastro already took so much damage, and still has risk remaining. Yeah, kind of has to burst there. Oh, the six B dodging the, dodging the jumping ass. The super is good. Will this get time. counter hit. That's that, a, see, that was sixty percent. That's a that's a that's a lot of damage, like they would say. Holy, the cross up. But Leah keeping up the fence, but unfortunately, you are playing against Nelia. Here we go, which side? Oh, luckily for Leah, not... Blaster not quite able to get that conversion. Oh my god, hitting from behind! Of Oof. course! And picking it up. The jump heavy, such a classic button since she got that, uh... That new jump heavy in Exert. Mmm. And there are certainly situations where it can be ambiguous which side you're on, and melee, really good melee players will use that to their advantage. Yeah, it's really an essential part of her kit. That, and combined with 
the fast, like the, the momentum she comes down with after air dashes really fast, as well as. Um, you think I pressure well the, the double air dash? Unfortunately, <gasps> we'll have the tables turned and the grab. Leah, Blastro, we... one hit away from death, but will run his game plan. Again, I think this is going to miss. Will he get caught on his dash? No. Oh, it hits. This time it hits. I'm surprised. It's been missing all other times, but this time. There is a very small bit over Biken's head where that super hit. And it is. Um, I've gotten hit by it more times than I'd like to, to admit. <laughs> Ooh, nice close slash. Very decent choice of anti airs. Finds the hit. Leah slowly building back the burst. Oh. Unfortunately, not going to be able to break that wall. Here we go with the RPS again. I like that. Even if Leah goes for a parry there, the throw is going to catch them. Mm -hmm. I missed the first. Oh, the Very nice. I feel like that's, that's the first time that Bulastro goes for a burst bait this round and just pulls it out at a perfect timing. Yeah, I, I really love to see that because a lot of a lot of players, especially like mid-level players, after learning about sort of burst baits, a lot of players tend to burst way too many bursts and as a result lose a lot of value. I always favor like getting data first, so, sort of checking how is your opponent bursting in the first place, and then when you're kind of sure on their habits, that's when you bring out the baits. Right, yeah, though. and generally, learning to use burst in itself is is, is a big skill, and it's um, you know as much as it is the the cheat bar, the get out of jail free button. There's a lot of of thinking that can go into it, and you can tell when someone uh, when someone really is putting in the work and the thought into making sure that they're using that resource as effectively as possible, especially yeah. because of how differently it can behave in a lot of matchups. And the Lustre here, just continuing Dash. with pressure. Throws are really nice against Biken. It's like, especially since you have like either a very damaging throw, or if you have a character that just generally gets to utilize a lot of throws, and Milia? Even though she has a very minuscule throw range, she has fast mobility and it's a couple of frames and you can be up there, close and personal with the opponent. Oh, the nice. air grab. Ooh, but this time, we are checking the throw. Unfortunately, not getting that, that hit, but we'll get it now. Gets a setup on the safe jump. <laughs> the YRC. Especially airborne opponent landing so many blast frames frames for uh, Bulastro there. All right, time to set it up. Blast we'll frames are a myth. It's all about mindset. That is true. Men mental frame advantage is worth a lot more than what the games actually say. Yeah, especially on a vortex character like Milia. As much as what I said is, is a bit of a joke. There's. A lot of truth, and I do genuinely believe in, you know, sometimes you can read your opponent in certain ways to disregard what the game is actually trying to say. You know, some people will be scared of, of the Vortex plays on Melia or on Eno, and will just not do the correct options. Is this a safe jump? It is not. Oh, it's been really 50-50. Sometimes Bulastra gets it, sometimes they don't. But despite that, so ready to just explode and take the momentum back. Bulastro, six wins straight. Oh boy. Now a little bit of urgency slowly creeping in. Leah has to start performing really, really big time if they still want to bring this back. Ooh, that's a good start. 
Gets the hit. That's a solid burst. Any opportunity you have to keep Nilia from running the game plan of just you know, making you guess, anytime you can eliminate what ends up being chance is, is good. Ooh, the frame trap. Here we go now in the corner. This is where the rewards are available. A good escape from Blastro. We'll be taking Leah over to the corner. Oh, I love that! Not forcefully taking the, the the wall break and getting a setup instead. Yeah, especially because you can play to your advantage. The fact that your opponent is getting up off screen and they might not be sure what's going on. They they aren't going to be able to be sure of you know what the angle is that you're approaching at, and a lot of that can play into the way they're going to try and defend. Yeah, Leah for sure. with a full bar of meter, but unfortunately is going to whiff the jumping slash on the 6p <sighs> the deep and get dash. their own 6p punish. Right, first Solid one. ground start. It's all about just not, get, not letting the Milia get that first knockdown. Manages to get the... Uh, sorry, oh. gets a setup, but now is going to be sent into the into the danger zone. Will Velocity be able to block? Nice. He is. What kind of punish can he get off of this? Alia recognizing they are on the edge of that disc and jumps out. Oh, wow, did he? Mirage the command dash cross up. That was so hard to see. Here we go once again, left to right, Lia. He bench properly this time and we hit, but oh, too early. Mari. Oh? Oh, that was a bait, but I think Leah had already queued up the backdash. And there it is. Yes. Unfortunate. That was such a good read as well from from Leah. I presume that was a read, but backing off out of the punish situation. Honestly, that's that's one of the things that kind of pisses me off in Strive. It's really hard to see the difference between a blocked and a and a hit, hit on YRC. It looks so similar. And sometimes if you're not really like going for a hard bait, like you just say, all right, now I'm going to stop doing everything. I think you're going to do YRC and then I'll get a punish. Unless you're in that mindset, you might actually miss might actually miss the YRC punish because you don't realize, oh, I, I blocked it. And that's Yeah, that... it, it's always um, a bit difficult, especially especially when you're playing the, the faster characters, to keep in mind when the opponent is going to be able to do an option like YRC. Especially, you know, any, any player who's not used to that as an option themselves is going to, to struggle to keep it in mind. Because it's such a... Um, it's it's a bit of a different kind of um, kind of it's not a button, but it's it is it's an option. Well, yeah. And also, who knows what they can do out of their YRC? I think very few people actually lab out how to respond to blocking a YRC. That's a that's a very important situation to be aware of, because especially at higher level, people. People do use YRC quite a bit, and like a blocked, sorry, uh, a hit on the YRC gets you basically a mix-up because it's so plus. It's basically a thick throw situation, sort of depending on what range you landed at. So you you better be sure to RPS uh, in the right way. Does YRC get you a counter hit if you if you punish it? That that's the thing. I'm not even sure. Mm, I don't think it's counter hit recovery, or is it? It is. Apparently, it is? people are saying oh. in chat it is. See, right. I am bad at this video. <laughs> SMI, it uh, seems. All right, but it's gonna now be we have Diogo, our third Portuguese player in a row. The 
Portuguese countlet now up against Bonderudo, a Finnish Biken player. And Bondo had their debut match last week. Uh, and since I'm such a smart caster, I already forgot how it ended up. But I think Bondo did pretty good job. Maybe. I actually was the one playing against Bondo last, uh, last week. And so, you know, on one hand, I am rooting for my compatriots. But at the same time, I want to see... You know, the opponent I played last week put on a good show, because a lot of the fun bit of the, this event is seeing the week-to-week -week progression that everyone's putting through, so... <clears throat> yeah, and especially after be... you've, you've sort of played against a player once, you you really know them on a on a comparatively, like, different level. Because you've been, you've been exchanging fists, you've been exchanging those words on screen. And we have the Dazado the Zato issues coming in, just a lot of screen pollution again. Much like Faust, there's a lot that happens, and if you're not ready to deal with it, you're going to seriously struggle. The Faust is refilling the Eddie bar. Oh, but gets it gets it stopped. Good 6P. And time to mix it up. What's it gonna be? Yeah, Diago really on point with those anti-airs. This is super, super important. I feel like you, if you, if you don't have your anti-airs on point, people are just gonna abuse from the sky all day uh, and all night. Uh, hasn't hasn't gotten his uh, his tether combos ready, which is fair. I mean, <laughs> it's it's probably like unless you unless you lap like a situation after the throw, the tether really doesn't come up that often and it can like be a very weird situation right. very aggressive zato play it's interesting you will see a lot of different zato players play um very differently a lot of people playing more like a zoner some people go for the very aggressive pollute your screen what am i doing you can't tell scenarios bondo he really being able to get the those eddy kills but isn't being able to then get in to, to get the punishes fortunately but if they manage to get eddy dead and get in i think they could get get in a very favorable position especially because Zato himself doesn't survive for that long when he's being hit. Yeah, you don't have a lot of good reversals or anything, and you kind of get blown up really fast, but it, none of it that really ends up mattering if if the games are going to be like this, because the control from Diogu was amazing on the first game. Will he go for the Eddie reset or for the damage? Ah oh, yes, Eddie Gage always. And now to get back, get his stuff started. In the same back situation. into the corner. Ooh. But Bondo getting out for a second gets the cross up. Can can they play off of it? Hoping to be very. Ooh, okay, still gets the throw. Ooh, the air throw. Ha <laughs> ha! Oh, that is the jump D. That's. Such a nice air-to-air -air button, but it is kind of dangerous in a sense because you get locked into that same traje trajectory for a very long time. I'm being very the patient. Full screen frog, oh! giving the space to go in, dodging the burst, but isn't able to get a full punish off of it. Look at this control, Diogu. Oh, nice jump out. Oh, the air grab. The PRC. But gets grabbed himself. Oh, I manages did... to get the gold burst. I've see... never seen a Zato gold burst. Un... Oh, gets opened loud. The unsummoned to continue pressure. Yeah, it's like Z Zato. Zato is very vulnerable against um, universal mechanics. Wire sees bursts. 
those are very dangerous things because those will basically take out the little guy and hit you at the same time. So yeah, Eddie is uh, very susceptible to just getting killed and against a lot of characters that move faster, that can just be the end of the round for, for Zato. If you're yeah, not so ready, if you're not um, on top of your defensive game. And I feel like the layer 1 bait is usually going underground and sort of avoiding the YRC, avoiding the explosion from burst. Oh, and there's the 6 speed. Zato's 6 speed, one of the best, I would say. I think it's still... It's such it, a big button. It, has it gets a, a lot of reward out of it. Yeah, especially the reward. I think it's on the slower side, but... Otherwise, it's 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 not too bad if you if you manage to get a like a good hit. All right, get the wall break, the positive bonus. Waiting out the Eddie gauge, and now Bondo just having s a lot of troubles to get anything started. This perfect control from Diogo still goes on. Oh, that that should be it. Oh. A little bit oh, of a combo the, the, the frog ping pong. But <laughs> gets the slick shot. <laughs> that momentum there. <laughs> I've never seen... Like, I've seen other characters use the drift for momentum's, like, kind of shenanigans, but never seen a Zato player do it. I guess you, you rarely see that because Zato would much rather, like... I guess control the screen or... Not really be airborne a lot of the time. Zato's air movement is, is quite good, but it is at the same time you are still a Zato and especially if you're if you don't have Eddie, you don't wanna be getting up close and personal to people like that. Yeah, but you knowing the place where you can go against that expectation can be really valuable for you. Because obviously you... If it is considered a bad thing, then going for it can be good because your opponent won't be playing around it. Ooh, nice gets a snipe. The little guy is gone. Immediate burst from Diogo. That's the first time that they actually have to burst during this set. Oh, that's so smart. The uh... Oh, getting the setups. Your now Baikon is a Vortex character and she's very up close Ooh. and personal. Uses the tether to get up close after getting that safe jump. Another really good anti-air. And this is bad. Oh, one more hit. Oh, nice to respect. Just a little bit of FD to get that chip to not go through. But now it's back in the advantageous position for Zato. And Yogo is going to get around. I'm surprised that Bondo didn't attempt the burst there. Well, it's... Going into the next round with Burst, I think, is uh, what Bondo was trying to do here. Because even if you, you take the first round, then it's very difficult to go from there if you don't have your full, whole resource to deal with. Alright, 6P combining with, with RC, maybe predicting the Burst bait. There's the Burst from Bondo. One hit point and a dream. Gets the snipe, but ah, doesn't get a clean uh. conversion. Just a little too far for for the jump slash into uh, into Yozan Sen to connect. Right, not too bad on the first big block string. Another good six P. That that six P getting through through the six H is very good. Because Baikon's, uh, not 6H, sorry, jumping, jumping heavy. That, that's one of Baikon's strongest approach tools. It negates so much space for the opponent that being able to contest it is um, very important. Nice, now we see Zato with the corner. Yeah, again. But he does have full resources. He can do a lot here. Ooh, okay. Gets rid of the Eddie for a while. Yeah, that's, I, I guess that's a... Pretty decent investment using 50 meter to sort of just throw meter at the problem, make the make the little guy go away. 
Me, we have Duke being so aggressive again. Ouch. Oh. The big damage. It's the command grab. Yes. Bondo does have a burst available here, but... When is it a good time to use it? Zato can, can bait it out so much, especially when you have that much of, of Eddie Gage to, to play around with. And you can just keep up his pressure. That early... It's a very difficult position. Yeah, that burst from the earlier round must have been on Bondo's mind there, because they were holding holding the burst for a very long time. The time when Diogo played the uh, Break the Law bait. Right. But you, and you could tell though, I, I think what happened on the last round is that Bondo was able to read that Diogo was being mindful of the burst and playing around it and keeping himself crouched, keeping himself on low profile so he can either break the law or just try to block the burst, keeping distance and only using Eddie moves. Oh no, that's, yeah. <laughs> that that is been... going to be enough. <laughs> That starter would have been over half Bonda's life, if they had any left. Well, again, nice backdash baiting. Potential throws or strikes. And we've seen Diogo play a much more aggressive Zato for the first few sets, and now he's keeping more space to himself and just taking the safer interactions. Making sure Bondo's tools won't reach him and just uh, dishing out the damage. Oh, there it is again! The inertia switch. Who oh, baits the burst? But we still, we still need to get the hit. Oh my god, that was so, oh. so brilliant. I think that's the, that's the counter tool, because I think a lot of people, a lot of characters now Eddie's can... dead. <gasps> this is your opportunity to get in. But obviously Zato still has good buttons. The deep dash, oh, just neutral jump over the too heavy from Biken. Oh, yeah. The pose still active. Nullifying the big hitbox of the Yozan Sen and allowing Yago to get another really good 6p. Alright, six wins in a row. Yeah, this has been complete and utter, utter control, basically, from Diogo. Ooh, but gets grabbed in the corner. What can Bondo do here? The tether is broken, but there's an oppose at play. No whole behind. lot of Eddie to get through. Ken has to respect that. That oppose. If you swing into that, you're probably gonna take quite a bit of damage. Nice the low, the little hits. They end up stacking yeah. up. The cross up! <gasps> I think Bondo has, has sort of started to respect a lot of those anti airs now. Just whenever they jump in, they just don't hit the button at all. We are going into the match point here for Diogo. Potential last match of the, or last round of the set, unless Bondo. Manages to find some sort of a solution here. These full screen combos. With Eddie. Eddie is dead and Bondo is very close. This is the perfect opportunity. He still has a burst to get through. But there's Eddie again. Oh. Good 6p. Now Zato has a lot of... Had a lot of risk there. Ooh. Oh, gets up pull. Cool. Onto the ground by the sword. It's unfortunate. I think he was counting on having already jumped over the sword. Oh wow, it just keeps going. Maybe forcing it, but used up all of the enemy meter. Didn't even go for the unsummon to try and conserve resources, but ah. it's not going to be necessary. Yeah, the Yosan Zen hitting a little too high and landing right next to Diago. For a free throw, 7-0, very, very strong showing from Diogo. I don't even know. So we saw the Kai last week. We saw the Zato this week. You know, which one of them is, is the main character that, um, to him? I am actually not sure, but 
if you have this kind of Azato as your secondary, yeah, that's freakish. That is freakish. That is yeah. one hell yes, of an ace uh, Telling me that Kai is actually the main. So this is a, a pocket Zato, and it's so, so good. Such good control over the character. I would have thought it's like the other way around. Having having um, having Zato as your main, and then having maybe Kai for a couple of your bad matchups. What are even Zato's bad matchups? That's a good question. I think anyone that can reliably kill Addy and then get into you would be Axel. Yeah. Axel and Happy Chaos, people are saying. Yeah, that's that's actually May. Fair. May I, I I can see May's buttons seem like it would be very good at at killing Eddy and then the the dolphin pressure into the corner while the Zato doesn't have any resources. Plus, May deals a lot of damage, and it has been established that Zato dies very fast. Yeah, and May, May also kind of difficult anti-air here and there, and... Yeah, it's... it's. I, I feel like Zato is one of the... like Even, even though he kind of has pretty decent anti-airs, he's one of the most exploitable character from the air, because you kind of have to concentrate on the ground... ground play because of, you know, your kit having to pop it and all that. All right, so Gaz needs a little bit more time. So mm. we could probably jump into the Volkanage versus Gamma match next if they are ready to go, let me. Vulcan is from the UK, right? Yes. I think I recognize the name. So I have some friends who went to, to a, a local tournament a couple weeks ago and Vulcan was there, Mystic was there, so. Oh, Gamma's actually is ready, so it's just a case of getting Vulcan to, to say something. And as I've heard, Vulcan's a strong Eno player. I play Eno myself. I'm excited to see this. And generally, UK fighting game community seems like a bunch of sweethearts. Um, unfortunately, uh, while I was living back there in, in England, couldn't be too involved. I was a bit too far away from things, unable mm. to, uh, to move, but... I'll see. An Axel versus Eno. Personally, I don't think is uh, that bad of a matchup for Eno, uh, though it forces you to play a lot more patiently, which I, as an Eno player, is not what I signed up for. <laughs> yeah, I think Axel is one of those matchups that are a little tricky in the past, but a lot of a lot of a lot of Eno's worst matchups, I feel like, have been sort of. Um, balanced out a little on Strive because, you know, the characters have been, to some extent, been remade and some of yeah. some of your biggest disadvantages don't apply the same way anymore. For example, the... like, yeah, like Faust, Axel, those kind of matchups that... Characters just, that just prevent you from moving around a lot are not necessarily as bad anymore. Yeah, I mean, it's there's some rough matchups, and I think it's also to do with the game itself. Eno is a, a fairly frail character, and if you get caught out, which usually it is just your fault and not due to matchups in general, but if you get caught out, you will take a lot of damage. Um, and especially, I think in in Strive specifically. The unfortunate truth is a lot of people play Soul, and Soul is, I would say, Eno's worst matchup. Uh, a three frame 5k, very hard to deal with, hits a lot of options. <laughs> but I'm gonna see the Axel play the Axel play. Yeah, this is actually interesting. I think first time we see Ga Gamma on Axel, they were more known for their Jacko play um before, but I think they've been rocking Axel for, for maybe like a month now. Hmm. I'm not, not, not exactly sure, but this will this will definitely be the first time I see Gamma piloting Axel. I do really want to see it because 
Axel is one of those characters that when I see when I see people doing cool stuff on, there there's some incredible things with uh, with the time stop, the bomb loops that, you know, anyone can anyone can pick Axel and just use long normals and be annoying. But it takes, you know, a, a quite a bit of practice and knowledge of what you can do and what what scenarios you can do. It's to kind of measure out very distance specific things like. Again, those those time stop combos. So I'm excited to, to see these and um And personally I, I have I have a big soft um, spot for for you know very neutral based characters and what is Axel? Axel is just purely nothing but footsies, basically. Bootsies in in my anime fighting game? In my strive? <laughs> what? Now mobility m mobility is obviously a little bit of a problem for Eno. Doesn't have access to like no a normal dash. So She'll she'll kind of have to use her sh movement options more than more than many other characters to sort of gain in on Axel, but she she does c have a couple of really good options to reach full screen, like Chemical Love reaches very far, uh, Stroke the Big Tree goes fairly far, can dive under a lot of things, the dive kicks, it just you know depends on what you think Axel player is doing. And I guess more importantly, what the Axel player thinks that you're doing, because it is Axel who's going to be setting up, uh, sort of setting up the pace in this matchup. Sort of, Axel will be the one who gets the first say. Yeah, but if, um, as you know, you're able to, to understand and call out what the Axel is trying to do, you can definitely make use of her uh, of of her movement options to, to get in close, you know. Your stroke and your dive kicks are very easy to call out, but if they do not get called out, you get a very big reward off of it, and then it's really difficult for the for the um, Axel player to get you off of him. All right, let's see. I'm just Gamma. excited to see this. I'm all. I always love seeing other people play my character, so I can steal some tech. And immediately we see. Falcon Age being forced to be patient. And Gamma, again, as you said, dictating the pace. It says, Ooh, there we go, the dive under. I feel like well, there we have it. It's. Who? The YRC? Oh, trading? I feel like trading at that kind of range, you know, is always going to be beneficial for the Eno who can not be sent to full screen. Yeah, as long as you don't you don't get traded with something like very hard hitting that Axel can just pick up on trade. <laughs> right, first match or first round for Gamma. Collecting information. When this is the time to press it, Gamma has yep. to spend their burst. And here we see Volcanage again being very, very patient. But now, oh, unfortunately, gets thrown out. And back being kept away. It. Yeah, this it's... is this is the, the the bit that can be frustrating, but it's a oh. to fight Axel. Oof. And into the command crab. There it is. Yeah, this is this is sort of very very good showcase on on what are the difficult things for Eno. You you do have to take quite a bit of risk as Eno to sort of you know get an in. It's it's basically unavoidable. You're you're gonna have to RPS eventually, and it's gonna be some sort of a jump in RPS for the most part. It's actually so, so difficult to approach on, on the ground. But if you do approach, then you, you can get good setups. And as we can see here, Vulcanite is actually going for 
Oh, that's unfortunate. The burst will will beat out the super. Yeah. As good as that super is, and it is a really good super. Yeah, by default there, in this there game, are answers to it. Yeah, in this game, supers really don't power through bursts anymore, like it was in in a lot of the previous games. Ooh, nice, and gets a very good conversion there. The neutral jumps have been working out really well for Gamma, and it's kind of kind of interesting. Like, Axel used to be more more of a grounded character, but now in Strive, since Jump Slash is such a good move and you have access to a lot of, a lot of these other new special moves, you can kind of be a little more airborne. And no trying to control space. That's very important in this matchup, is to try and get that space under control. And Gamma wow. patiently also using some FD as they can Closing out the round, closing out the first game here. Wait, was it the first game or the second game? That was just the first one, yes. It was first, right? One. All right. I... I feel like, you know, you're, we're not used to seeing any sort of round with an Eno in it take this long. You know, very typically, the Eno will just get in and do stuff and, and finish very fast, or she will get jumped on and it ends very quickly. Right, finally, Volko able to sort of open open Gamma up a little. But as fast as they were able to score that damage, Gamma is already out. And now it's back to this. The struggle to find the hit. Ooh, Gamma is so, on Gamma. so conscious. This is scary. You have an actual player who can actually defend smartly. That's putting terrifying. a lot of thought behind the defense and, and knowing what is um, what is going on, what the Eno is trying to do, and the biggest the biggest pointer to playing Eno is kind of being inside of your opponent's head. And the moment you can influence what they're trying to do and be the one who's in the driver's seat, you're winning. And Vulcan is gonna have to start running these vortex loops and getting Gamma where they want him. Here we have it, the one little interaction away, but yeah, Gamma's yeah. not just going to give it away. There's the throw. Oh, that's so much meter. But do they get to Force use the it? burst. Oh, there we go. Yeah. Ooh. You kind of... Very good use of that slash dive. The neutral jumps for, for Gamma have been surprisingly good against those dives. The dives end up missing, but like as a result, Gamma sort of lands with frame advantage on top of Volko. Again, the... Man, the control. The recognition. Right, here we go. There it is. Chemical Love, very difficult tool to use in, in this game, I feel. But when it works, it's, it's very useful. Getting the wall break here, getting some Oki to play with. There we go, that should be. That's yes. going to be enough. Yeah. It can go sour for the Axel players so fast. I was getting scared because a lot of those earlier rounds, Gamma was defending so well and it, it felt like Volko, even though they had pressure on a lot of occasions, they just weren't able to open Gamma up very frequently. When in the mindset of an Eno player, speaking from my own experience, it can be it can be very difficult when your opponent has shown that they have the knowledge to deal with a lot of your options. It can make it a lot scarier to go for those same options, knowing that if you get called out on it, they're going to know how to punish you. And the mental game in fighting games is, is really important in maintaining kind of posture. Yeah, it's Knowing like, when when you can just run your game plan is, is important. Yeah, at least half the battle, in my opinion, is fought in your own head again. And just able to tag Volk out of all of those approaches. <gasps> <laughs> wow. Catches with a 2S. Luckily for Volk, that wasn't a 
too much of a big combo. Usually, like, the best rewards for Axel come from anti-airs, especially that 2S. Axel, again, a character that has the tool to win interactions very favorably, but has to win a lot of those interactions. Yeah. And Inu is kind of in the same boat most of the time, but against certain choice matchups, she will just run away with the match after their first knockdown. And here we have it, Vulcan. Right. I need to be very patient, but gets to the corner. Gets that counter hit. Unfortunately, the stroke will not go through the burst at that angle. But it's fine. We're back in the corner. But there's Gamma. Getting these callouts. Ooh, you know, wait, but 100 Vulcan, meter. Vulcan's flexing a bit now. We can see Vulcan is, is showing that they've understood what's going on. And now, now they've got answers. Ooh, here's damage from Axel, though. As I say that... But there we have it. Vulcan playing a lot more patiently, recognizing what Gamma has been doing and turning it against them. He's able to hit a lot of those chemical love heart knockdowns that round. I think three in total. Yeah, chemical love is still a very good um, option to, to use as a whiff punish. When you know when to use it, when you recognize that it's the, the correct situation and it won't just whiff and leave you vulnerable to getting counter hits. It's it's very strong. Here we have Axel on the offensive. But probably, again, putting... It probably requires uh, quite a bit of matchup knowledge, like when exactly to use it. There's a lot of moves that feel like they should be punishable by Chemical Love that aren't. And recognizing those and, and not just uh, not throwing out the move. Because, again, as I said, you're still counter hit status on land. It can be very, very dangerous. Again, we're having both of these players adapting to what each other is doing, having a bit of a dialogue with the play. Man, running into Axel's pokes like three times in a row or four times in a row is is so frustrating. You you sort of get into a mindset where you're like, all right, he, he just keeps reading me all the time. And even though the damage doesn't pile up very fast, it you can get into into like a very un, unfavorable mindset as a result. Well, there we go, Gamma crabbing. Just like that, getting called out on your pressure can be very demotivating. De it's, it's very important to keep keep it going because the moment you're not confident in your pressure is a moment where your opponent's going to see more and more openings in it. And it can be a vicious cycle. Oh, good, good awareness in the matchup. Grabbing that heavy, stroke the big tree. Overhead, yeah. Prompting Gamma to burst, but they're just in there as fast as the burst came out. There's, there it is, the <laughs> very conservative use of the FD, but still, that jumping heavy from Eno you know, will just smack you out of the air. Then send reaching full screen. Hey, it is, it is very. Uh, surprising how how long these matches are taking, you know. Especially in Strive, where we're used to seeing games go so fast. Yeah, it's sort of out of necessity. I feel like if if the if the actual player plays the matchup smartly, or pretty much if both players play the matchup smartly, it's it is gonna take quite a while because you you probably oh, there's a jumping heavy counter hit, but unfortunately won't get anything off of it. But Gets to go into pressure. Gets to smack Gamma around in the corner a lot. That's going to wall slump. I like that. Choosing to not take the the weak wall break. Opting to keep the opponent there. Nice. Really going for that close slash right away. Volko not giving up. Two to three now. 
But yeah, that getting that getting that wall slump and not breaking the wall is is I feel like it's super important for you know kind of like same as as with like Leo or Milia, you really don't don't want to take that wall break without without a super and even with super you would oftentimes just keep the 50 meter and keep the position um on Eno specifically uh daru known as, as the Eno sensei has been a, a great um source of, of knowledge on this we, we figured out a lot of this uh, of these techniques to more um consistently get wall slumped you know, knowing when which kind of combos are going to cause a wall slump and knowing which moves don't make your opponent go up in the air. So in the corner you will see Enos avoiding doing combos with that 6H. The microphone stand will send your opponent up into the air a bit too much. It kind of feels you know, like the... You know, like the momentum is starting to shift in Volko's favor. Finding so many more openings. And you can only block. Yeah, choosing to take the wall break there. If you can even get the Oki on the wall break, you will most likely take it. He's in timing on the burst on Gamma. Doesn't end up getting low profile by Stroke the Big Tree. Ooh. This is very dicey because even even if Gamma is at that low amount of health, Volcadage has to respect that it's hard to get in against this Axel. It's like one one chemical love could could be it, but Volk just not getting any openings to press buttons. Oh, there we it. There it is. We're in. Kinda trade. Ooh, careful. Ooh, six oh, careful. The six B avoiding the jumping. That was... jump, the jump slash? I am not sure which which buttons are what on, on Axel. I'm I think it's be... jump jump heavy, right? But that, that was very great. Volko has been getting hit by that same button over and over again in that situation. This time finally finding the timing to anti-air. I wonder, is this something that they're going to be doing consistently? Is, how is it going to force Gamma to adapt? You know, we're still relatively early into the set. It's three to three. Ooh, big counter. A lot of matches. And taking the wall break because when you cannot guarantee a slump, it is not not beneficial to have the enemy Axel just go flying around. Unfortunately, unable to punish the burst. I can't block any special moves anymore. Oh. oh, terrifying. Yeah. Again, the neutral jump from Gamma completely nullifying that stroke to Big Tree. It's such a comfy, comfy maneuver for Axel to do as well, because if they if they don't approach on you, you can fire your jump slash and sort of keep keep zoning them out. If if they come close, you can use the jump heavy. Ooh, but here's a good Horizontal dive from. What a pickup. That gets the wall break. Nice. That's a lot of damage. And a setup. Oh, I think Volko might have missed that forward test there. Nice. Hold this. There we go. That super will be almost plus 30 in the air. It's very plus. Guard, guard breaks you for so long that you are just forced to guess that 50-50. It is interesting how willing Eno is to just throw out meter just for the chance of, of getting in. Yeah, but I think you, you you will probably do that pretty happily, especially in matchup, like matchups like this. Yeah, where winning one of the one of the gambles can net you just the round right yeah, there and there. For sure. Ooh, here we go. Oh, but oh. Didn't go for the air dash. But that, all that meter is gone and... And now you're in the corner. Ouch. Ooh. One good hit from... Away from... Gamma getting this one. There's a burst. 
Oh. Unfortunately, just a little bit too far away. God, that's that's so Gamble risky. We'll take it. I keep holding my breath when I see like wild gold bursts like that in Strive because no longer are no longer is the gold burst strike invulnerable until landing. They're actually very very vulnerable in Strive. It makes some for some very interesting interactions. But I, but I always respect going for the Hail Mary play. You know, when you're very low, about to lose, about to lose the game, it's always good to just throw it out. Maybe it'll work out. Work out. Yeah, and if you if it doesn't work, then you're about to lose anyway. It's fine. Yeah, especially <laughs> if you have a lot of hit points to chew through on your opponent. Like you, you do have to take some sort of a risk usually, especially against characters like Axel who. Oh. You just can't play standard against when when there's a massive health discre discrepancy, discrepancy, discrepancy. English. <laughs> we saw there Vulcan actually getting the burst bait out and opting to go for the vortex plays, just getting a hard knockdown and playing off of it. Got Gamma into the corner, and here we have it again. Just carefully playing, but Gamma is able to get himself out there. A neutral jump once again, avoiding stroke to big tree. A solid burst. Getting back into the corner. Ooh, anti-air. Close slash is an is an underrated uh, anti-air by most by a lot of people. You know? It goes around and it's very active. It's it's nice. Yeah, you 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 know these super good skull slashes from characters like Melia, Nago, Soul, but you wouldn't I, I wouldn't like Melia's so, sorry, uh you know skull slash is not the first one I would think about as an anti-air. And that that is part of its power, is people want uh, what expected as well, because it feels like it, it's it's a very close range move. Here we have Gamma getting the call out on the on the dive. The comfortable good old 5P. Ooh, it's Gamma who does the anime run start dash into and throw. What, when did Gamma swap the Kai? You mean Axel? No, no, run up grab. Oh, I see, I see what you're saying. <laughs> I see what you're saying. Uh, using the burst more offensively here, just to make sure he can stay in the corner. It's very important for Eno, but now you're back in neutral. You just need to get a few hits. You've seen Vulcan in this position before, and just needs one good punish. <gasps> oh! Preventing themselves from getting punished there. That's 100 no meter used to, to keep this pressure alive. And but it will it. be enough, you know? Meter doesn't go into the next round, you might as well use it. Yeah. Going for the win. Especially since Gamma was on the last hit point, you will that was that was a that was that was a good uh, choice from Volko for sure. Alright, getting plus frames. From the note. And the risk is slowly starting to pile up. Ooh, that was such a well placed horizontal dive. And Volker's just all over Gamma in this round. Now, luckily for Gamma, we're going back to neutral, but. Again, it's the 6P. That's 6P. You know. I love Eno 6P, it's really strong. I play Nino, I want to be it. I want it to be as strong as possible. If even I can recognize that that didn't look like it hit. It's weird the the animation doesn't always completely correlate with the hitbox. Alright, nice dive. Very risky nice. but gets out of the tricky situation. And once again, we're we're back to a full screen's worth of range. Gamma oh. loves being. That doesn't mean they're not they're they're scared of uh, getting some damage up close. 
Oh, the cross ups. Alright, opening the burst here. That burst will still hit. But we're still we're in the blender. No burst, no meter for Gamma, no nothing. But luckily, going back to neutral again. This will this actually favors Gamma. Ooh. The last ditch effort to get a sniper. Fortunately, but... didn't didn't pay off. Yeah, that's. But that chemical love hitbox will remain there. That's even honestly, if he gets blown. Honestly, having to take that wall break was. You would think it was a good situation for Balko, but no, it. I think that's where it all came crumbling down. Going back to neutral with even life situation against Axel. Yeah. Ris risky burst. I, oh. I feel like it's always scary to do those kinds of bursts when your opponent is in the middle of a move. But here we have Gamma going 6 to 4. Or was it 7? I think I actually didn't miscount it at the start. And it was to. 2 zero. It, it had been in the, in the first match. Yeah. So that, I led you astray. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's okay. But still, um, that was a that was a good showing. It's a um, it's a fairly even matchup, but it's very it forces you to play very differently, as you know, and yeah. and have a, a, a very calm and collected mindset that a lot of you know at least I as an Eno player I just want to get people in the blender, and sometimes it's hard to have that uh, that patience ready. Yeah, and when you when you have to be the player who sort of um, has to tailor their or has to sort of venture out of their comfort comfort zone and and pick a different play style, you're you're usually at a disadvantage, sort of, unless you've played the matchup a lot and just are perfectly comfortable playing in that style. Yeah, it's it, it takes a lot of, of playing there and playing being forced to have that mindset to then be able to, you know, when it's necessary, swapping between you know, it's not just for Eno, but for any any character that has specific matchups where they have to play very differently can make those matches matchups feel a lot less as a, a, advantages than they actually are. All right, let's see. Is gas ready to play? Is the question. Where is gas from? Finland. I recognize that name. Also a Finnish player. So this this is a a home match. Two two local teams or players. <laughs> yeah, the for classic, you at least. Classic. Not only classic players on Bounty Hunters, but a, but a very, very familiar Sweden versus Finland face-off. Oh, Wait, did I get it wrong? I'm... I might have... Did I miss here? Because I thought you said Gaz was from Finland. Yeah, Gaz so is from is, Finland, but Radun... Is Radun is... Radun right. is Swedish. I apologize. No worries. Mostly apologizing to Radun. <laughs> no, I, I had it uh, in my mind uh, that uh, Radun was from Finland. Sweden, Finland, same thing. Am I right? <laughs> You're all very far north and, and very much uh, colder than I'm used to. All right, gas is on the way. Nice. So we can queue this one up. I'm surprised that Radun and Gas haven't played yet. But this is a this is a very very familiar matchup for me personally. Lots of lots of Leo players around, lots of uh Soul players around. Both players probably should be fairly comfortable. Well, not not necessarily comfortable, but at least have experience in the matchup. Especially because they're two fairly popular considered to be some of the strongest characters in the game mm -hmm. you know i feel like um leo and soul are two of those characters that are in everyone's top 10 
Oh, we have uh, Gaz in, in the chat having made the same mistake that I, I did. <laughs> so at least I don't, I don't, I'm not alone. Yeah, got both players here, We're getting ready. Two players above level 1000. That's uh, a lot of playing. Now the thing here can be, Radun does play Leo a little, like, on the wilder side. Can, can play Leo a little different than what you are used to, depending on the kind of players that you've played against. And if you, if you don't sort of hold it together very well, they can egg you into some really disadvantageous uh, dogfights. But then again, I, I guess Sol is pretty good at those dogfights as well. So, so when you say Radun plays a, a wild Leo, you know, Leo is wildly considered to be sort of the gorilla character. Is, is that just a nice way of saying that? <laughs> not to put words in your mouth, but... Well, I think, like, it's... It, it, it's, uh, not just the nature of the character, but also the nature of the player. You'll, you'll see, you'll see. <laughs> I like what I'm seeing already. I love Just that stance. Food. That stance B from Radun. I'm actually not used to seeing Radun anti air with that all that much. But that is that is one of Leo's best anti airs if you already happen to be in in a, in a stance. Yeah, I think people give a lot of um, give a lot of flack to, to Leo for for again being that gorilla character. But any inherently any character that has sand switching, especially with you know, back turn stance, which is as unsafe as it is, kind of have to inherently put a bit more thought into it. Yes, you can play Leo, not thinking a lot about him, just pressing your buttons, but it takes generally a higher amount of thinking to properly use all of those tools that you have access to. Oh, wow, is that gonna be enough? I don't think it's gonna break, yeah? Yeah. Unfortunately, not close enough to the wall. <laughs> but a chip is going to do it. Incredibly high-paced rounds. We just came from one of the most patient matches we've seen, and suddenly we have Leo Soul, really yeah. to get the blood pumping. <laughs> a completely different kind of pace, for sure. I'm already seeing a lot of 2Ss, which is, I think, for Soul, the secret weapon in this matchup. 2S is... Well, most importantly, Radun loves to use 2D, it's no secret, and one of the few tools that Sol can actually comfortably challenge 2D is his 2S. Ooh, the dash backward. Forced into block stun on that on that projectile, but still not enough to get out of the blender, unfortunately. Ooh again! Man, Radun was ready! The patience, the two! Two back turn P's in one set. Man. And unfortunately, Radun gets punished going for the 6P on Battle Bringer. But, you know, I respect going for it at the very least because you know, the, the potential reward you have there is, is so great. But now we have Das, Gaz, on a, a very advantageous position. Gets the grab on the cross up, tries to go for the cross up themselves, oh, and yes, will get the conversion. Indeed. Now we're seeing Soul's big threat. Most stray hits can convert into very high damage combos. Very dangerous to be hit by this character. Ooh, that's a big one. Let's see if Radun wants to burst. Very safe, Gas. Holding the force. Gas again. Oh, the same situation again. Yeah, the, the thing with that is if you, you... You can't really do the old throw PRC anymore. It's, it's either you're gonna sort of dial into it and lose value if you actually hit the throw or you're trying to react with the miss. Unfortunately, Gas doesn't get a conversion on that DP punish. Yeah, Radun has, has got away a couple of times with murder so far. Those DPs not necessarily optimally punished. <clears throat> and I feel like the, the key to defeating Radun is definitely having your punish combos on, on point. Definitely, especially the kind of combos that are going to get you over to the corners, you know. Um, 
It was a, a wise Saint Cola once said, Souls combos are open world gameplay. It's the Elden Ring of, of, <laughs> <laughs> of Guilty Gear. And you can see here, Soul can reach far and with the proper use of those Drift RCs, it can go really far, really far, really fast. It's one thing I'm very excited in, in, in the upcoming match. If, if uh, Soul with Vigilante, but we're on, we're on this one now. If Soul was an Elden Ring weapon, which weapon would he be? Uh, two Claymores stuck together. <laughs> I love that. I by doing closing in. Oh, it gets clicked by the DP once again. But unfortunately, it won't go into the direction of the wall. Oh, that was such an interesting... But it's, it's fine, Radun grabs into the wall and it's just going to keep up the pressure and it's going to be enough to kill. Yeah, Radun with... Sort of like with the overwhelming momentum. Oh, the prediction on the DP. Go spray it again. Ooh, that burst barely touching. Same with the Gunflame. Here we have Soul in the corner. Can be very dangerous beast. Ooh, Takes some big. very specific answers. Kinda lucky for Red Tyrant Rave. That the wall break ended up coming way sooner than Gas would have wanted. Ooh, punish on like the, the uncancelled. Punish. And the Gunflame. There we go. Yeah, Gunflame is yeah. another really excellent tool for for this okay. matchup. Unless unless Leo goes for a fireball of their own, there's not a whole lot. It's like Leo's own fireballs or instant air dashes. Those are those are the two things that can sort of call out your your gunflames. But otherwise they're probably gonna call out most of Leo's pokes. I'll burst on the Nice the I mean, Vortex. You think Gus was going? Oh, that little, that little dive kick, really, not dive kick, it's a uh, drop kick. It reaches so far and Radun uses it with a very smart uh, spacing. <laughs> Rare footage of Radun respecting after 2D. When it is minus five, so unless you're point blank, you're not gonna get a, you're not gonna get a punish against it. Nice tacking gas from the air. Gas getting recognizing that Radun likes to use that um, that drop kick and keeping themselves distant to then punish it themselves. Ooh, <laughs> the DP the bait. Punish on the DP will lead to the wall break. All right. It's fine. Will Radun just go for the cross up setup? No, goes for the goes for the projectiles. A rare quiet moment. Ooh, that was yeah, a perfect we're back there, into actually. it. Ooh, nice! The prediction there! But the job is not done. does have a full bar of meters, so I think. Yep, any sort of hit here. Oh my god. Even after... Even after getting that amazing bait, Gas not able to sort of flow into the pressure after the punish combo, and Radun just taking it back. And getting a burst bait of his own out. Man. Yeah. So even if it is a uh, three to one now, it's it's important to note all of these matches have been very close. So yeah. It it can go either way. Both of these players are obviously very strong. Whoa. Yo, is the this footsies? Is this footsies? Is this how you're feeling today, Radun? Holy But yeah, like you said, I feel like Gas is like one or two good adjustments away from being able to take a lot of these games. Nice. Yeah. I think the DP, so, I guess, um, plus frames. So many DPs happening. I don't think we've seen Radun do the do the flash kick version of, of, of that move. The, um, the light, the light slash, um, the light slash isn't strong or you know that was an awful Get pronunciation it. i'm sorry to anyone who might S -S be or speak german <laughs> Sturm. 
Oh, oh the DP to counter the DP? <laughs> that was some well-timed hitboxes there. Being able to challenge that DP. I could round start. Cool. The respect from Gaz there. Let Radun with reversal. Again. And Radun now gets the DP punish. Perfect spacing on the back turn, Oki. It's kind of kind of hard situation to be against uh, characters like Soul who have very hard, like far-reaching reversals, because obviously when you're in back turn, oh the bait. Especially when you're allowing yourself to stay, you know, in a stance like back turn stance where you you, you cannot properly block to it. You have the counter, but you know, that can that can be baited out. And here we have gas again, as you said earlier. Getting that adjustment and, and taking taking another game with it. Yeah, it's it's kind of like you, you can't really fight your own nature. To some certain that extent, that six B went so far. Again, the trademark, Radun 2D. Ends up not getting Radun out of the situation this time. Decent combo. Back to the neutral we go. Ooh, meets gases Fafnir. Oh, the call out with the grab there. Showing the matchup knowledge. And Gas still has the positive bonus, so a lot of meter to work with here. Yo, that drift backwards and a punish. There we see the gun flame. Pretty good at calling uh, out a lot of pokes from Leo. The neutral jump. A lot of whiff grabs in a very short succession there. Now, this round is one interaction away from finishing. Make it two. Oh, did she get... Yes, got the punish. The 5B. That is all that's <laughs> needed. Why go for anything slower and riskier when you can go for the guarantee? And these grabs off the Radun. So good. Calling out... So many good interactions with them. Wait, did Far Slash just call out? Did F Far Slash just hit Vortex? Ooh. The canceling, canceling the command grab there. Oh, with the 2D, go for the DP Abusing still. Using the invincibility. <laughs> Red Dude really loves, uh, loves that wild RPS, and it's been working out for him as well. Nice. Yes, not letting themselves getting caught out by that uh, by that counter. Oh, there we go. Reaching Success. through the fireball. Yeah, especially the heavy fireball. Very star, slow one startup. Extremely vulnerable against Soul Success. Oh, Radun has to read. The burst fade. I think that's a kill. Has all the meter in the world. Yeah. Well, even goes for, goes for the cutscene finish. Thank you, ma'am. <laughs> Mashup knowledge. Hell yeah. Ooh, that was so smart. Radun was waiting with the parry stance to connect oh. with something, but Gash Are we just... gonna see? Oh, unfortunate drop. It could have been so much damage. It was already a lot of damage, but the fact that it could have been even more is crazy. That's just kind of the nature of both both of these characters, actually. Their ability to just destroy. Oof. Amazing and reads. As Radun. I'm saying that, yeah. These are two characters that deal an incredible amount of damage. Judy again, catching backdash from Gas. And Radun, yo, he's so ready every time. Oh, blocking it, getting the punish off of it. Unfortunately, he doesn't have the meter to get a hard knockdown, but this is still a very advantageous position for Radun to be in. And unfortunately well, for Gas, again, Radun is, is making these amazing decisions. Airborne waiting for Gas to whiff something as soon as. Radun sees the button go up, air dash forward, punish it, take the round. Man, 
Radun is playing out of his mind this set. I think this is honestly like one of the best performances I've seen from Radun. There's so much matchup stuff here. Again, the back that is, turn bait. Uh, another another thing is you know for both of these characters with how popular they are, and and how good they're perceived to be, they end up having a bit of a weakness in that in that people are a lot more able to to go and practice the matchups and go That's learn true. what works in which situation. The the meta disadvantage. Again, catching the Rad Doom turning around. And I don't have the pressure of, of actually... Oof, wow, what a good calendar. I don't have the pressure of actually being in this match playing, but even I'm having trouble sometimes understanding where Radun is going to be, which side they're going to show up out of to hit. Very difficult character to block against, Leo is. <laughs> I think Gas missed the punish there, was close enough after the 2D, but... He's using the fireball to erase the flames. There you go. Gas is, is showing that they aren't out of this just yet, but unfortunately they will get punished. The ODG hit, not enough to finish it, but they block the guard stance. Ooh, that's get to grab on it. Ah, but the trade at the end. Oh, unfortunate. That's definitely, like... That's the way you kind of want to threaten the stance, because you can't really... You can't really easily swing into it. If you swing into it and it lands on the guard point, Radu or Le Leo is usually going to get a punish. But on the other hand, Leo players are going to know that you kind of want to do that, and they will let the let the strike rip out of that stance more um, faster than you get there. Another really nice back turn be air uh, anti air from Radun. The wake up DP is paying off right now. Bit of a combo drop, but we're still in the position. And Radun opting to not let the burst rip. Radun is showing go. a lot of confidence. They've been very patient with their burst usage so far. Holding it for kind of as long as they they feel like they can. Which against a character like Sol, knowing when when to actually burst and, and when you should really take the opportunity to get yourself out of that sticky situation can be very important. I feel like Gas, we'll see. Gas did start oh. the matchup using that 2S a lot, but has sort of... She's kind of forgotten about it as the set progressed. Because Radun is now getting away with a lot of those 2Ds uncontested. Ooh, the jump he was smart there. Use your fastest recovering move, but now... Radun entering the set point situation. This will be tough. Yeah, touching yeah. the armor point. Yes, is fighting an uphill battle here, but it's certainly not out of the question. They've shown that they have the... the knowledge and the tools to really get through. It's just a, it's just a matter of some good execution. There's a and, lot of mental stack at play. Yeah, and you were talking about those those bursts, but oh, I think this is gonna beat it, right? No clash, okay. Oh, Radun didn't cancel. Radun didn't take into account the, the possibility of a clash. That is an interesting interaction. And there, there we go. go. Soul still has those star reaching command normals. It's a very common situation that Really perfectly spaced Gunflame range. Gunflame into 6S into Gunflame. Again, a maneuver that you really have to challenge with a jump. Because otherwise you're you're probably Ooh. not gonna find the frames. There we go. Added. Having a good, good solid Beautiful. punish on that DP. This is what we need to see. There it is. Again, that open world gameplay. <laughs> oh look at that again! Standing at the perfect spacing. Oh, that, that, drift, that drift RC getting hit into the um, 
into the into the projectile it hasn't been working out. Oh, good with punish Ooh. and trade in gas's Very favor. Good. Here we have gas just again lapping on the gas, getting out momentum. For how long? Radun is one of those players just who doesn't really ever get faced by anything. It's it's I feel like it's impossible to tilt Radun. Oh, there we go. Goes under under the iron cross. There we go. And Spending the 50. A lot of damage. But Radun Might not also... look at it, but there's that's a lot of guts at play. That's that's still a really good amount of damage. Sure, that was so sick! Nice. Guess this meter is Radun. building. Oof, that 5k not hitting there is un very unfortunate. Alright, don't oh, miss but it. Now there Radun doesn't have didn't have any sort of resources to make that DP safe. God, I was it? I was holding my breath there. Like don't miss it. Don't miss the punish. <laughs> Took a lot of patience for Gas as well, because Radun holding that 50 meter was sort of destined to come 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 out of that situation. Ooh, Victorious. The vortex. And again, man. Another DP punish. Both of these players love their DPs. Not enough to wall break. I think Radun. Probably wait, hoping that would just break the wall right there and have a little bit of a moment to wait in the transition and got caught off guard. Oh, good 6P Ooh. reading the round start position success from Sol. Look at where Radun is standing at. Oh, there's the DP in the corner. What was that dash in and respect just waiting for Gash to flinch? Yo, I swear, this is this is Shin Radun. This is something else. Yeah, oh, the there's vortex. a vortex, but unfortunately, going into the guard. Yeah, that was a good idea, but a little too late there. Again, with the 2D, Radun is immediately ready to uh, to flash kick, bait the beat DP once again. Ooh, and is this? this is it. It's oh, not. This is... <gasps> the style finish. <laughs> <laughs> My goodness. Radoon closes it out. I gotta say, it it it, it might be the matchup that Rad Radoon just has probably played this matchup more than you know. It, it's it's very likely that you you've played against Sol quite a bit in the past, and he did have so many good matchup specific options. Available and was we're using those as well. Really good yeah, exactly. reach as well. The the higher level um, pl players we have, the more these options that come out of knowledge are, are necessary to to sort of keep up. And it's really cool to see um, when all of that comes into play how how high the level of these matches becomes. Obviously, that was a, that was a good showing from Gas as well. It's been only a couple of couple of weeks since she switched back from uh, from Happy Chaos, so it's still probably in that sort of like a reinitiation period with Sol. Yeah, and and Sol, as as much as it is the this character that just has a lot of very strong buttons and seems to just do a lot of damage with anything. Has a lot of really high level, high execution things to do that really set you apart from from lower level soul players. And and being able to do that and doing a lot of the sort of Kara volcanic viper things are going to get you very far ahead. And it's hard to to just pick that up out of nowhere when you've been playing a character with such different execution like Happy Chaos. Yeah, I'm gonna tell you, I, I still can't do any of those difficult Kara combos in Sol, even though I've played him for like a lot of months. It's fine, it, and it's also just knowing when to apply that kind of stuff and feeling confident enough to do it in 
live matches is completely different. All right, next up we got Zing Mei, another Finnish player facing off against Luxon Nagoriyuki from Norway. Ooh. Now Luxon, one of the one of the few one of the few representing members of the Norwegian fighting game scene. But I feel like yeah. I keep saying this like Norway, the, the 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 players that come out of Norway, they always tend to be like super strong. The few the few dedicated players that they have are really the first to be reckoned reckon reckon with. Yeah, it's um, it's interesting because you see, um, you don't see a lot of a lot of Nor Norwegian players. I've noticed. I I've. I think uh, Luxon might actually be the only one I've I've kind of heard about in I mean apart from the ones that were present in in Strive Cup, only one that's been kind of around here in our more immediate circle. Yeah, it's like Luxon, uh, but Felix. Who who other Norwegian players can you name? I I can't really remember from the top of my head at the moment. Yeah, that's uh. Straight, but here they are. I'm gonna get started. Mei and Nagoriyuki in in design, polar opposites, but both these monsters of just dishing out damage. I feel like poor Zing has been sort of forced to fight a Nago player after a Nago player for for like a long, like three three events in a row now. It builds character. <laughs> yeah. Oh, the gold burst. Oh, that's going to hurt. Not going for the wall break super there, but Luxon's very close to exploding. Really playing Ooh. it dangerous with these these Fukios. And I think the Mei will just take it. That was an amazing whiff punish there with, with the Dolphin. As soon as Luxon whiffed that too heavy, just immediately ready to go go in and... Totsukeki! Ooh, yeah, I have to burst that. Yeah, you do, do not want to be caught up in those kinds of combos. Oof, hitting behind me. Ooh, catching Zing on the way up. This should be a punish. First, yep, with the grab and the ODG hit, will will finish it out. Yeah, honestly, that, that was probably the safest thing that that Zing could have done. I, I I was about to go for a two P punish, but that's that's way better. If Lexon ended up having a burst there, it would have also got it gotten completely outplayed. Alright, spending a lot of blood here. Is he gonna pop? He's gonna pop! But does Zing notice? He does! Yeah. Yee. Yeah. Just the patience. And unfortunately, that spells the end for Nago in this round. At that point, there's really nothing you can do. It's it, when the opponent has chosen to just sit still and wait for you to pop. All you can do is accept your fate. Oh, and Luxon isn't just going to take it. Ooh, 6P into the wrong direction. Got the backdash, but oh, but doesn't quite able to manage to convert that zing. Playing me like a grappler almost. We've seen a lot of these, a lot of these grabs setting up things. Yeah, honestly, Luxon does not want to be in the corner. Honestly, May May is a crappler. That's it's what what is even the definition of a crappler? I thought it's like when you so every every character plays a strike throw, but when it's the throw component that you're 
hoping to score rather than the strike. I think then we can talk about Crapplers. That should be it. That projectile pressure. You don't see a lot of a lot of maze out in the open using that, but it's a very powerful tool for us to use, especially when you when you drift RC. You know the the beach ball, the beach ball getting thrown at you is going to cause a lot of problems. Yeah, I feel like the beach ball sort of shares function a little bit with the heavy dolphin. Both are like slow to start up and end up in plus frames. Sort of ways to cash out on your opponent's respect. It looked like Luxon called out the called out the cross up from May there, but wasn't able to to get any punish on. And unfortunately is going to take a lot of damage for it. And I'll add like level oh, two even after still gets hit. Even after drifting forward or, or backwards, that jump heavy just reaches so far. Baiting, baiting, lurks on. Not flinching at all. A lot of ancient play. Who tried to go for a too heavy, but way too late. There's the make conversion, but accidentally crosses up, it seems. Nice. Oh, the air grab. OTG 6H. Again, another gold burst. I kind of like that because Luxon was running very low on blood, so it was kind of likely that they have to either commit to the to the bite or just go straight into a into a strike. So the gold burst was gold, gold burst was basically perfect there. Yeah, definitely. It's just one of those options that you don't see players. Oh, seem to have gotten a connection lost. Error. I haven't had this problem in a while. All right, let me ch -ch -ch. do some magic. Put it back to winner's face. Unfortunately, we're gonna lose this matchup or this match. Don't get to watch that, but we should should be able to get in on on the next one. Yeah, May so is... Also these health bars, it seems to be fairly even. I say that as as the Nazgul takes around, round. Uh, 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 loses the round, sorry. But yeah, it is unfortunate. He's like, I would definitely pay money for them to put in DLC lobbies if... If the lobbies work perfectly from the viewpoint of the tournament organizers, that's like the number one biggest change that I'm hoping for right now. Other than the cabinets working properly in tower yeah. and whatnot. Yeah, definitely. I I like the the lobby system and, and the kind of flavor it adds to it, but when it gets in the way of, of the actual functionality of it, it is it is unfortunate. It seems like Zing did take, did take this match, I'm leaving it at 4-0. Next, you've snuck snuck us back in to to watch this, and now Zing with a th four straight wins. See what Luxon can bring to the table. Ooh, nice. That was so Ooh. patient. Very good. Ooh, barely missing with the Beyblade. Trading with the Dolphin. Unfortunately, that 6 h one hit, but goes for the air throw. And it pays off. If if Luxon has one specific angle covered, it is that the air airspace right in front of them in the corner. It's basically now, what, three out of three or four out of four, those air throws. Every single time Zing leaves the ground, it's snap call, gets the air throw, throws him back into there. But that's, that's I think that's almost all that, that um, 
all of the pressure that Luxon has been able to muster this match. Oh, Sing. unfortunately, he gets, he gets it just by the tip of that anchor, but still manages to pick it up with the air throw. And now, applying pressure on the May in the corner. Oh, nice. Position nobody likes to be in. Ah. The burst now, unfortunately, is going to get punished. Lexon has had yes. a lot of trouble in the past with, with the self self pop. I wonder this if the, the unfortunate part of against playing Nago is sometimes the, the play gauge just isn't in your favor and it's very hard to maintain yourself in the match in the in the correct position to deal with it, but then, you know maintaining pressure properly. Ooh, nice. Gets to recover out of the jump D, comes out with the jump K. That zing. Blocks the cross-up, but gets hit by the grab. Still at a lot Ooh. of burst. Blocks the gold, uh, a lot of blood, but blocks the gold burst. Unfortunately, he is going to eat this combo. Thankfully, didn't give Zing any meter, which would have most likely killed, Whoa. and if not that, given good Oki. The footsies, the classic 2K. So many characters can challenge that S Dolphin with a 2K, but... Again, it's not enough. Luxon trying to do everything they can, and they are doing a lot, but they just don't seem to get things started the way that they want to. Oh, the gold burst again. Yeah. Oh, unfortunately, it doesn't. Sort of saw that burst from mile away during the RC. When you see that uh, that red RC explosion, doesn't sort of connect with anything. There's only one explanation. They're bursting. Mm -hmm. And Zing felt that. And... Ouch. Oh, that is a lot of damage. Zing just mauling. Yeah, a lot of a lot of the Nago bros have been talking about how how sort of difficult it is for Nago to find the anti-airs against Mei. Believe it or not. Ooh, but here's Ooh. an anti-air. <laughs> there we go. That's very good, but... Oh. Unfortunately, unable to do much with it. Still has a little bit of health to play with, but definitely nice. not a lot. He's about to pop. Can he... Oh. Again, it's kind of optimal... That, that's, the, that's the most optimal place to pop. If you're gonna pop, pop there. Yeah. Ooh, too far Especially away. Especially because those, those moves while you're in while you're in Blood Rage will still do a very reasonable amount of chip. Oh, barely missing there. Now Zing with the pressure. Oh no. Yeah, has to burst. That would have been a kill. But it's still very close to bursting. In fact, is going to burst, but... Oh, OG, I was yeah. about to say, is is May in range to punish that? There's all she was. Yeah, I think unless, unless your name is Potemkin, every character in the game should be able to dash full screen, follow that Blood Rage explosion up and get a punish. And even, even, even Potemkin st can still get a... I mean, you can still get a slight head. Uh oh. Ooh. Thankfully, Zing doesn't find the punish there. Ooh, finally finding. But in return, Luxon gets the burst out of the way. Fortunately, still under pressure. Oh, wow. <laughs> there it is, finally getting a little bit of an anti air in. Unfortunate side switch, Luxon probably didn't want it, that to happen. All those jumping heavies not really paying it, uh, uh, not really paying off for uh, Luxon. Goes for the reversal. Who's it? hits. Already committed to a button. But we still need one. What's it gonna be? Ooh, that was so tricky. I would have not seen that coming. At the momentum, sliding in there with 2k, yo! Oh, the air throws. Lexon does have these air throws. Just check, on check. 
I feel like a lot of OG Guilty Gear players have really... They're on a next level when it comes to air throws. Just like, obviously... Air throws used to be the best anti-air in the game. Still kind of odd, Went for it again there, but unfortunately it didn't pay out. Oh, this is a lot of damage coming in. This is a big punish, but even on a wall break, it's going to go back to neutral. Yeah. And Luxon has a massive life lead and a Look meter. That. Is that footsies? That's footsies if I've ever seen any. All right, we're not free officially. Officially not free. Putting, putting themselves back on the board. Luxon can definitely build some momentum from here. And that's what we would like to see. But I feel like I feel like Zing is a very Oof, consistent the player. Burst. Oh no, fireworks! Oh no! Oh, but what that crossed up. But I think it still hits. Oh, he did that on purpose? I think. Interesting. I've never seen that path before. It is interesting, but you you go back to neutral on the wall break. So I wonder how. You know, outside of the obvious style points that it gives you, how worth it is it to do that in, in the live match? But it seems like that is all Zing needed. And now, it is check- Oh, look at that! Once again, definitely an old-school Guilty Gear player. Oof. That 2-H whiffing is unfortunate. That feels like a phrase you don't say often, talking about Nago and saying 2H whiffing? Yeah, again, here it is, the swag path once again. Is that almost enough? And now... Luxon can't take a single hit, this is set point. This is do or die. It, it seems like Luxon nice is ready to do. Beautiful! And we'll take this. What? <gasps> oh no! Okay. It's fine, it's fine, it's... <laughs> Oh no, my blood pressure! Luxon, don't do this to me! <laughs> Ooh, that's a big pickup. Maze air moves. Very wide swings. She will get a lot of reward off of it. But Luxon is still in this. Maze that's... proven to... Oh, there we go. But he's Covering gonna the start of that dolphin. The overhead. One more hit. The One time stop. Oh, oh that, uh, the chip damage potential. Oh boy, yeah, Zing. Zing is very strong. Zing is a menace, and I was about to say that would have been a very hard climb back because Zing is an extremely, like, steady, very consistent player. Definitely. But Luxon played there all until the end, and there were so many situations where it could have genuinely gone either way. It could have really turned around in their favor in a lot of the early match earlier matches. But unfortunately, it just barely wasn't enough. Yeah, I wonder... It, it felt like Luxon had a lot of really good responses here and there. Kind of like they they did have ideas what to do, but but in the end, man, Zing was just all over. What can you do? All right, jumping into the last matchup of the evening, and we got none other than Invalid Value, one of the most active players here on the Bounty Hunters. Almost undefeated, not anymore, but also one of the highest win rates on Nago. Against the Vigilante. Yeah, Vigilante, actually, last time I was playing Strive, we actually went for a long set. I, you know, promptly got my 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 butt handed back to me. So definitely going to be a cool match to watch. I would say, from my personal experience, this is probably one of the trickiest matchups for Sol. Just for, like, only for the merit, like... You, uh, basically, Nago is a very nice archetype. 
to play against Sol to begin with. And on top of that, Nago has the rewards to basically uh, challenge Sol with. Definitely, this is this is a battle of the top tier coming out. And here we have it, those soul conversions. But Invalid still has a lot of meter to work with, but it's it's not going to do anything, unfortunately. And v Vigilante with the with the trademark, uh, wake up command grab. So you see the Vigilante swinging that six heavy from soul around a lot. You might think, isn't that like very risky? But in fact, that six heavy is one of the one of the secret weapons for this matchup. It's it's very hard for soul to challenge certain folks from Nago. But six heavy is sort of like the equalizer. You know what? I'm going to do my best to equalize the, the channel point bat. I'm going all in on 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 my local boy here. Hell yeah. Oh, the fireworks! And, and still manages to break out of it. Here we have the grab, setting up for success. Gets the burst. Now we're at the very, fairly even position in the game, except now... Oh, never mind. Invalid able to get Vigilante into the corner. Beautiful. And gets the air grab. These Nago players going for their air grabs. But Sol with that 6 heavy and the great conversion crossing the entire screen and getting the wake up into the gun flame. I like that choice to go for the uncharged 5D there. Was probably. Vigilante was probably hoping that it was gonna be enough and finish um, Nago. But even on hit, that's, that's like neutral, I wanna say. I think. Hmm, I'm actually not sure uh, on, on Souls 5D specifically. Oof, getting a counter hit on that Bandit Bringer. Valid is definitely trying to go for the, for the punish, but that move is incredibly oh, hard to punish. Pop. Oof. Oh, still manages to be plus there. Yeah, oh, the Vortex going under. Now the Vigilante gets to go for... That's a massive risk when, when Nago has the Blood Rage loaded it's it's Oof. and especially the super it's it's one of the premium places to sort of just chill back and respect but i mean soul does have that full screen vortex that kind of goes under five heavy all right big nago damage coming in okay, just back the two h but the, the wake up volcanic viper and now the the big hits. Yeah. Open the world gameplay. has this. Oh, that's so beautiful. You'd love to see it. Unless it's hitting me, but yeah, I do yeah. really enjoy seeing that. those. You know, moving back, respecting the burst, Ooh, but getting that. it with a command grab. That was, that was kind of smart. So we, even though went for a very risky hard bait, was so ready to flow into the next... Uh, the, the reset, even though Invalid didn't flinch. That's kind of what you want in that situation. Have the plan B. If your bait doesn't work out, be ready to flow into the next situation. Yeah. But that is the third round of, of out of the few that we that have been played so far that has ended with a soul command grab. So I wonder how how is Invalid going to adapt to this? The last hit of far slash 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 sequence, catching the backdash oh. into a big combo. There it is. That is a lot of damage. Both of these characters are explosive. Yeah, this is uh, one of those matchups that the rounds probably are not gonna take that long. Well, it really depends. I, f if I feel like it's... The choice is in Soul's ball court. Like, if you want to force it, you kind of can. But I think in general it's... it's oh, it's the Volcanic Viper. Ooh, good check. Flipping the momentum, but the Vigilante still has a lot of life to spare here, even though they're in, in an inferior position. Bye. 
Are they gonna burst? They can't. They're stuck to the wall. Yo, the wave punish! Perfect! Oh. That baits the burst! Baiting. That was incredible. Invalid value with the sickest of plays. Is right. the download complete? Opening it up. That would be a very fast download. But it is possible. Baiting the DP once again. The same bait that Invalid Value ended the last round with. And look at the damage. He's gonna pop coming into the screen though. And Vigilante recognizing that. Gets the burst out, but that is not enough. That yeah. 2S is going to unfortunately so that's the risk that Rabbit. i was talking about when nago is in blood rage he's he's basically like max level his his normals will reach even further and that's the most dangerous time to be rpsing because during that blood rage nago doesn't have access to his mo mobility options so what can he do other than hit five heavy there's invalid just showing that they are in this to win it. But will it kill? I don't think it kills. Oh man, it's always the last hit point. So that, 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 was a, that was a commitment there. If if that Beyblade doesn't seal the deal, I think Invalid Value goes bust. That was, that was such a brave Beyblade to finish the round with. And I think, I think Vigilante was also banking on that. Who in their right mind would use a special move right there? But hey, risk, reward. There we have it, that patented Nago damage. Watching good Nagos play, again, I've said this earlier today, <laughs> but it is incredible to see the ways this character can move. I saw that! I saw that! Invalid value! He calculated the plot perfectly! He was just one tick away from being popping... from being popped. My god! Oof. Oh, that is... That is what a lot of hours on a character looks like. Knowing your limits. And here we're seeing it again. Yo, that beats DP? Oof. Really? That is insane. I wonder if it's a thing specific to being in Blood Rage. Yeah, it, it, it has to be, because like that that jump, is that jump heavy? That jump heavy just turns into a beast button when you're when you're loaded with the Blood Rage. All right, good check, 2K. Nice button against Fafnir. That 6P messing up with the air approach. We certainly have Vigilante here trying to trying to say that, you know, I have not been downloaded. I will be continuing the fight. Ooh, the back dash. Avoiding the throw with, from... With the shimmy, essentially. <laughs> and That's the Guilty that Gear shimmy. Ooh. The Guilty Gear shimmy. You either <laughs> back dash or drift backwards for style points. And I'm actually surprised. I was I was advertising the Soul Six Heavy so much at the start of the set, but Vigilante surprisingly hasn't gone for much of that after the first round. We'll see. Right. Scoring Ooh, this should be yeah the yeah, skills. Six heavy. Yeah, Six Heavy is like almost like it 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 just it just always deals the full damage. Yo, that was actually pretty sick. If if Invalid really Value hits that Beyblade a little earlier, that would have been a whiff punish. But now here comes Vigilante, playing that Guilty Gear Shimmy once again. Oh yeah, that's a punish. Completely with BR. Sorry, BB is is like the easiest whiff punish in the world. Here we have Invalid, also very close to bursting. <laughs> Footsies, man, like in there. Huh. Oh yeah, that's that's not punishable. Mid screen, if you get pop and pushed too far away, I think it's like minus seven or minus six, and at that range you're not gonna have any normals to connect. But vigilante, reversing the momentum, bringing it up even three. 
this is great. It's it's always good to, uh, to see the matches being close. Every you know, people are fighting their best. And I'm super happy to see more players that can actually bring enough skill to the table to be able to finally challenge this this guy, this invalid value who has been terrorizing the top ranks of bounty hunters Ooh, for so that long. Grab. Is he gonna pop? Again, yeah, this time. Did you notice though? Yeah, I didn't get pushed far enough away. Getting a very comfy punish. That was Ooh, so smart. That 6B on the time stop. Yeah, recognizing that the 6S was already coming and queuing up the 6B. Bam! Ooh. Ah, any amount of health above, zero, uh, above 1 is a luxury. And Invalid is just showing us that mantra. Yeah, Invalid Valley really, really deserved that run back there. Or that comeback. Oh, but this is a big hit. Gonna go into the corner. Oh, okay. A little bit of a miss. Unfortunate. Oh! <laughs> oh, so we see the burst used. Vigilante, unfortunately, not baiting the burst there. Yeah, it's kind In of a air. hard, very hard position to go for the bait. Because you're, you're, you're basically banking. Oof, the two H's. Get the throw. And even though it's not unprorated anymore, or like, even though the buck has been fixed, still a throw RC that deals massive amount of damage. Invalid once again in the lead. I love how Need is so pumped in the chat. Rooting, <laughs> rooting for the team Nago. Hey, Need will always be excited to root for Nago, especially if they're using the pink color, I think. I think uh, that that's an easy way to, to win Need's heart. And I think this has And been... I respect the dedication. I respect the dedication to a man. This has surely been a match or like a match to be nizing about because the plays that Invalid Value has been pulling off have been pretty sick. Yo, the 5k! <laughs> that dirty, dirty button! Ooh, frame trap with the clone. Here we go. Still with the blood buff. We can do so much more. Oh, interesting. Oh, resetting. <laughs> oh, oh no. Reading the Vigilante like an open book and... Oh, but unless... Does Vigilante is getting a shot at life here. Is that enough? That's so close. Not quite. Oh, the scaling. Oh. No! <laughs> I, res I respect what he went for there, but that was unfortunate. Slowly, I, that's like the kind of burst that I would make every single day in Exert. But the more I've watched, more I've watched uh, Strive, and more I've played that situation myself, I've come to the conclusion that 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 gold burst, that Yolo gold burst, probably is not optimal. It just gets it me probably killed. Probably not, but if it works out. It is very fun. Yeah, and at the end sure. of the day, I, I think I think we we love seeing it. At, at least, you know, as 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 commentators, we love seeing it for that. He's gonna pop again, but look at the life difference. <laughs> and and it's dead we, even. Hey, you say look at the, the life difference. <laughs> look the at meter the life difference, difference is uh, oh never mind that one isn't there anymore. But no, the PRC into the ground will get it. Now invalid value picking up a lot of important momentum. It's it's gonna this is gonna be actually crucial. Vigilante running has... over and getting the burst. Oof, that two H on blood rage will go very far. Oh, not recognizing the whiff. Ouch! It's gonna be the round. So much for when I said it was very close. You know, invalid just needed to prove me wrong. <laughs> And it's been like what two minutes? Two minutes since it was like three three. That is Nago gameplay for you. But I mean, Soul Soul has the same potential. Like couple of good reads, and we can be in a six six position again. Definitely. Now Vigilante has shown that he has what it takes to just run away with this. 
but invalid value obviously he's not going to make it easy as he's been showing oh that was so smart i'm gonna steal that all right getting the hit into the corner we go oh jesus to ah. oh, unfortunately doesn't get the full conversion but even still this is a very rough position to be in if you're invalid value Horsey is your meter defensively. All right, going under the DP and then punishing it. Is it just me, or has every single Vulc heavy volcanic viper tonight been baited by various players? Get yeah, Nago damage, round start. We have a comfortable lead, and this is a set point position, so. It is. Oh, oh no. Wrong way. Where are you going, Nago? <laughs> where, where, where are you going, Nago? That's not where the corner is. Oh no. He can RC this. Oh, this might be it. And can't there even burst. The first hit, the super making it unburstable, and the five heavy deals enough damage. An invalid value once again showing us what's what. Oof. But that was so well played on both sides. Invalid yeah. really getting the big call outs on what the Vigilante was trying to do. And unfortunately, Vigilante wasn't able to download Invalid back.